Hello, hello. We are here on Hello Monday. And today I'm not alone, but I'm not with Andrew either. That sounds and dangerous. What do we have today? Hello. How are you? <laughs> How is everybody? <laughs> it is very shy. <laughs> and you'll see from uh, Healers and Heathens, uh, you might know uh, who is watching YouTube, uh, their channel. It, they're awesome. Uh, they also have amazing podcasts, uh, Dark Angels and Pretty Freaks. And you have another podcast as well, right? Oh, yeah, I do one uh, with my, well, I kind of, Matt started it, but it's called Reasons for Several. And I've, I've kind of become the co-host over uh, a couple of years. So, yeah, thank yeah. you. Perfect. So thank you very much for uh, coming uh, and co-hosting with me today. <laughs> well, th thank you for, uh, I am very honored and humbled that you asked me to uh, to join you. I, As you know, Annalise and I love you guys, and we ha we had that connection the first time we were on your show, and then you guys were on our podcast and really hit it off. And this is like one of the first times that I've been nervous to be in front of a microphone in a really long time. Oh my, well, if you're nervous, then I'm freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm excited. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Thank you. Uh, well, let's see who do we have in the chat there. Uh, I see that we have already a couple of people in and more coming in. And while I'm opening the chat, ladies and gentlemen, share that live stream out the more the merrier. Uh, today, we're gonna have amazing guest, uh, Artem Morbid. He is... Uh, He's everything creative, uh, creative explosion, as I was saying in the promo. Uh, he's an artist, he's a photographer, a videographer. Uh, he is uh, amazing <laughs> and he is from Chicago. So you wanna stay and stick around and uh, uh, watch us uh, chit chat with him. Uh, but for now, we're gonna let some people come in and see who is out there. So say hello to Marcel Harding is here. And bottle caps, hi, hello, welcome. I'm sure you are a little bit disappointed that Andrew is not with me. I'm disappointed Andrew's not with you. <laughs> <laughs> bottle caps is always disappointed that it's only me. Like he would rather prefer Andrew, just just Andrew. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I always send him to the morning, uh, winging it uh, live streams, you know, but. Uh, <laughs> To today it's me but it's not just me so ball caps and might stick around uh it's neil here as well so next best thing so <laughs> <laughs> well, oh wow thank you <laughs> uh christy k9 hello uh mickey wilson philip hi thank you for coming in adgh travels our uh regulars so uh, always nice to see as well as terrell emerson and win city steve the guy with an amazing sense of humor I'm excited to see what's going to be coming. <laughs> uh, uh, well, yes, I thought it was city of your skyline. Where are you from, Wind City? Chicago, right? Is Chicago Wind City? I think that is the Windy City. Well, that's what I thought, too. So, yeah, it is Chicago. Our guest is from Chicago, so I tried to find the background that... Uh, represent Chicago, although I could have probably used one of his amazing pictures, especially his latest uh, street series. The, uh, the, those eight and a half by 11s that he does with spray paint just blow my mind. Like, I don't, I don't get how he can do that. Like, it just, it, it's amazing to me. 
Yes, I, I know. And I, and I was watching them yesterday again, and uh, we'll have to ask him because it's it's amazing. I, I don't even, you know, you, you can't call it a painter. A, like, how do you how do you call it even? It's it's so different. It's so yeah. different and different uh, the way he does it. I yeah, I, I really want to know more about it. So and I also want to know how he can combine everything uh, in one like he does everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he uh, he's one of those those people that um, that you for me that, you know, I, I saw and, and I was on his YouTube channel a while ago and, you know, know he plays music and I know he's he's got this really cool home studio set up. But he's one of those people that immediately like I just think like this guy's really cool. Like, I yeah. really want to know this guy. He's really cool. But in that really open way, I mean, he's so open about like you can ask him anything about anything he does and he'll explain it in detail a lot like what you guys do with your. Um, explaining uh the photography and the videography and and how you guys set up youtube it's just so open and friendly and inviting and it's it's just one of those people you're like i would so much like to be more like you like if i could be nicer that would be awesome <laughs> i think you're nice enough too <laughs> well we'll see <laughs> we'll see how the night <laughs> we'll see how you feel in two hours <laughs> yeah i'll see you again in two hours then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah, I agree. I agree. He's very open about the way he does stuff, and and I mean, I follow him on Instagram closely too. And and I mean, I I I only wish I could do street photography the way he does it, or like event photography, especially the concerts, because it's just a different level of of that. You know, a completely different way the way he's doing it. Of course, I have hundred and one question about photography. I bet. Yeah. You know, so if I wear away too much into that, uh, give me a sign because <laughs> we can talk for hours about photography. Well, in his in his photography and in his uh, in his videos, and you know, I mean, I've I've I haven't been there obviously to see him like write songs or or uh, write music, but he's got so much patience and so much confidence that it's it just comes across in everything he does, but not in a, not in that annoying like cocky. I'm really good. Just, just very comfortable with who he is and what he wants to do. Like he knows what he wants to get, even though if he doesn't know the exact shot he's going to get, he knows what he's looking for. And, and it comes across and, and when he, not only the, the pictures, but also how he's talking about getting the pictures. And I, I think that's really cool. I think a lot of, a lot of people, especially a lot of artists strive to be able to communicate their art verbally. So people can kind of you know, enjoy that process with them, but not a lot of people can do it, I think, as well as he does. Yes, I agree. And somebody asked for the link, so I'm going to be dropping in, a, first of all, you guys' link. He loves like he lives. Oh, well, thank you. Don't, this is this is your stuff. You know, we're we're easy to find. Don't worry about us. But thank you. <laughs> Got to give credit where it's due. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, later on, you will find the description and all the links uh, to guests and to my amazing co-host uh, as well under the video. Um, so you can check that out and check their podcast. By the way, if you didn't know, uh, we were on uh, uh, their podcast. What was it? Two weeks ago already? Uh, yeah, not this last, uh, Saturday, the Saturday before. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. so, uh, guys, if you haven't checked that out, I'm going to drop, I'm just going <laughs> to drop that link too. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. The cool thing is like, you can watch the podcast on YouTube or you can get it from any podcast catcher that you have. Yes. And anybody uh, has. That's right. So, and what, what should they look for if they are already subscribing to a podcast staff? What should they be searching for? Dark Angels and Pretty Freaks. Dark Angels and yeah. Pretty Freaks. There you yeah. go, guys. So check that out and uh, find our interview. We had so much fun. Oh, by the way, uh, you really want to go and check it because Andrew revealed some very <laughs> there were some, details some about good my story. personal life. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. We got some good stories. That was fun. Uh, can I tell you something funny? Yeah. So I'm so used to doing a uh, podcast and not a lot of live streaming that I keep thinking I'm on your podcast, you know, because a lot of times when we we do guest podcasts, we'll use Skype, but even though, but it's just audio. We just have the Skype so we can go off of each other's, you know, facial expressions, things like that. So I keep forgetting that people are watching me right now. So I know I'm going to do something super embarrassing, like pick my nose or get up and walk around and everyone's gonna be like, what, why is he, why is he not in the frame anywhere? So if I do anything terribly embarrassing, by all means, please let me know. 
Okay, I will start screaming. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? A, a, perfect. A safe word was potato sack. So maybe you can come up with some kind of. Oh, uh, you want me to? You know, I'm going to come up with something totally inappropriate that you have to yell out. <laughs> you can yell out, at Neil, you son of a bleep. You know, that'll work. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. We'll do that. Uh, yeah, well, that's that's why I was so, as, as I was telling you before we started this, I was so uh, thankful for you to coming on because I'm so nervous, even though this is like a 41st, I think, or 42nd of our lives. I, I still get so nervous about it. And um, especially when Andrew leaves me alone, I, I freak out. So. <laughs> well, so it's I'm funny you say that because every every time I've seen, um, you know, the live streams where you're, you're alone, meaning Andrew's not there because I know you have guests or you talk to other people, but you seem so confident and comfortable with it that it it's, I mean, it doesn't come across to me at all as nervous, which is what makes me nervous because I'm like, she keeps saying she's nervous. She doesn't look nervous. Now I'm nervous. <laughs> Well, I have I you know, poker face. So yeah, I, there you go. <laughs> my hands are shaking, but you can't see it. They're under the table. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, well, I, and I also, before I switch our guests, I wanted to, uh, guys, give you the link to his channel as well. And I'm going to be posting and putting the links all throughout our live. So this is not the last time if you miss it. <laughs> Windy City's letting me know I'm doing something embarrassing. <laughs> there, I can I can dedicate uh, you to be the screamer. The, I usually <laughs> don't uh, don't swear. So if Neil is doing something embarrassing, Steve, well, you got to scream like really like caps lock on like. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, thank you everybody for uh, being in the chat already. I see bits of real Panther is in. Hi, hello. Um, so nice to see you. Blue Wizard Animations. I think we're missing some blue wrenches here. Let me fix that. Uh, hashtag Every, blue wrench. You get a wrench and you get a wrench. That's right. Sidewalk close. Well, yeah, we got to fix that. Like, I want to see blue. Everything has to be blue. I want to I wanna be on uh, or watching one day when you and Andrew, like, somebody comes in and you're like, no, no, sorry, you don't get a wrench. No wrench for you. Well, it, it might happen, you know. I, I would think eventually. It, it, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you guys, I mean, your popularity is growing so much. I would ev eventually think that somebody's going to come in. You're like, no, no, sorry, not you. <laughs> well, you got to hang around a little bit. And, uh, you know, Blue Ranch Nation, somebody said it sounds so. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <sighs> um, well, okay, let me see if our guest is somewhere near. <laughs> Uh, hopefully, 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 uh, now. Well, usually Andrew does all these technicalities. I'm on the ch chat and I talk and I don't do all these technical stuff. So, uh, there. Hey, now it's a waiting game. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, okay. I know there's so, so many tabs. It's unbelievable too. Like, because when we are work, like when we, there are both of us, uh, we usually have both laptops on and the phone. So, you know, there's separate windows and separate screens, so to say. So it's so much easier, right? Sure. Yeah. And here it's like, everything is under the same as 120 tabs open. So, um, I like sometimes watching you guys and when, there's a lot going on in the chat and you know, you're really deep into a conversation. It looks like you're at like the controls of a spaceship. Cause you both got stuff going on on the computers. Your stuff is pop popping up on the screen. Everybody's chatting. It's really cool. It's a lot of fun. It's like this, this little sci-fi community. It's fun. <laughs> That's right. Uh, a okay. Foraging and adventures. Hello. Uh, so nice to see you too. RT Jake. Yes. Uh, well, uh, life first, we always say, so work first too. Hopefully, life before work, then work, and then us. Uh, <laughs> and then us. <laughs> um, yeah, I, yes, hello, Art Morbid is in the chat, and I sent you the invite on your Twitter. So if you check your messages, it should be right there, and fingers crossed it works. Mm. Yeah, because if there are technical difficulties, I'm not going to know how to solve them. And <laughs> <laughs> uh okay terrell terrell hi angel angel hello how are you doing today 
How are you guys doing on Monday, by the way? Monday is such a hard day. Neil, is it hard for you? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, a little bit just because usually the, the weekend has been so much fun and, and I have to get up so early that it's a, it takes me a few minutes. But um, fortunately, I, early doesn't bother me too much and I do enjoy you know my work. So it's just that first couple of hours of, of uh, Let me know if you getting, can hear me well. Hello. Few extra coffees. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Good evening, Neil. Hello, we hey. can see you. How you guys doing? Doing well. How are you? I'm um, doing fantastic. I hope I'm coming in nice and clear. Because uh, I, I had issues before with uh, my other interview. <laughs> so hopefully everything is coming through nice and clear. My voice is clear and the image is clear. Neil, fine, glad to meet you. Very uh, glad to meet you. Sinia. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you say it? Senia. Senia. Yeah. Okay. Pleasure to pleasure to meet you. And uh, my deepest gratitude for having me on your show. I'm a big fan and follow you guys for so long. And I really appreciate you having me on. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on our guest. And uh, again, uh, Andrew was so excited and really wanted to be here. Unfortunately, life comes first. <laughs> but hey, fortunately, I have Neil today with me. <laughs> oh, this, is, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. I'm enjoying this. This is great. Uh, so thank you so, so much. Uh, I know life gets busy and you are amazingly busy with everything, all the amazing stuff that you're doing that you're going to be talking about. So I really appreciate you taking up time and, and being with us. Uh, yeah. And people in the chat are all excited as well. So uh, thank cool. you. Cool. Uh, just, I, I can't see the chat. So if you guys can like relate back to me, if anybody's saying anything, I don't have uh, my external monitor. I don't have that on. So I just have you two on here. If that's a problem, let me know. But so no, 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 no problem at all. Uh, okay. If there's going to be any questions, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to try awesome. and try uh, on the chat as well. If uh, guys, if I skip any questions, please just uh, put it on again and put push the studios at the beginning so it colors orange and I can see it <laughs> just in case. Uh, and if I don't ask it, just just keep hammering me again till I do because I just <laughs> might miss it. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, so uh, thank you. Well, uh, maybe we can start with uh, for those who don't know, and I'm sure everybody does, because I mean, you're like a Chicago star <laughs> in the community. Uh, but if uh, somebody doesn't know, um, a little introduction: of Who are you? Uh, what is your channel about? Okay, for everyone that doesn't know me, uh, my name is Frank. I'm a photographer and a musician, as well as an artist in the Midwest, uh, primarily in Chicago. And I use my channel to promote other artists and other musicians, as well to promote some of my photography. But uh, I like to keep it so that I can also help out other smaller creators get known out there. And that's primarily why I have it in there, because I love uh, video and film. Photography is like a big passion of mine. And I feel that uh, my channel is the best medium for the moment to promote that. And uh, you have gained quite a lot of uh, followers. Uh, I think you have now around three, three, a bit more than 3,000, am I right? Yeah, it's uh, 3,315 subscribers. Mm -hmm. um, That's amazing. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I, I owe most of that to... Uh, the music to be honest because of the fact that uh for the my initial start to the channel was to promote my band and then essentially what i started to do was like i started to go to shows and i wanted to capture the local bands who normally don't get the same type of uh how do i say this uh if you notice a lot of people go to concerts they film with their cell phones and stuff uh, i wanted to do something where i can use my dslr and having a little bit of knowledge and how to use it to get the uh, cinematic look and I can take that and f film their sets and try to promote them and, and you know get them some attention so it started to build up in that type of sense so ha having the fact that I can do photography and then knowing that I can also film with my DSLR it helped me uh, post a lot of videos as far as concert photography is concerned and uh, get you know, the bands out there that normally don't get the same attention, you know, so it's give them a little bit of better quality. Uh, so I owe a lot of that almost 90%. If you go back and look at all my whole videos, that's 
music is 90% of that. It's only recently that I've been started to use it for, to do camera reviews, to basically share my knowledge of how to use the cameras. Uh, at first I used to think, well, um, you know, people can search this out and they probably don't care. You know, they can figure it out on their own, blah, blah, blah. But what I started to find out is with a lot of my close friends, you know, they had a lot of questions. You know, there was a, you know, that's an awesome, what kind of camera are you using? What kind of lens? Uh, what do you do for your audio? So all these questions. And I started to realize that like maybe people don't have, you know, or maybe they're not searching out as much as I think that they are. Uh, so therefore, let me share my knowledge. And when I started to do that, I started to come across more and more people. So it's slowly been progressing as it's gone along and I'm, I'm pretty happy to do it. And I found that I really enjoy teaching and uh, helping others out uh, to get them, you know, better results using cameras and uh, little point and shoots, action cameras, whatever it is. And I'm a big fanatic of using like old lenses, you know, that's a big thing for me. Yeah. It's, and as you're talking now, I'm actually sharing. Uh, oh yeah, sure. Your, uh, okay. Uh, your channel. My, my channel, yeah. It's awesome. Uh, so I'm a big fan of like old lenses. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I'm using to uh, do this live stream with, I'm using Panasonic GH2. It's a mirrorless micro four thirds camera. Uh, it's the older version. And I have a Tokina EL 28 millimeter lens attached to it so that I can have this type of look. Because uh, before, what I was using, I was just using my webcam and then just using the mic from the web, uh, from the PC, and it's horrible. Uh, you know, I, I I I did a few initial live streams back in August of 2017, uh, and it was it was just terrible. Um, so I tried to do my best, and finally, up and up until this moment, I was able to hook all this up, and I, I wanted to be able to use this mic as well too to get the better sound, and having the combination of both and then it's like okay now i don't have to be too embarrassed about coming on some live streams and trying to do some interviews um but i'm really enjoying doing the live streams uh, it's a lot of fun and i've actually now that i can move away from paying so much attention to the quality of the mic and the audio and i can concentrate and just kind of go back to talking about photography and filming and whatnot Mm -hmm. You're getting a lot of love in the uh, in the chat, Frank. Just wanted to let you know, everybody, oh, uh, awesome. big fans of your channel, and a lot of people are saying hello and uh, happy uh, happy to be hearing you. And hello, everyone. Yeah. You guys are awesome, everybody. Ed Joe, I know Ed Joe was gonna. Yeah, be on. yeah. Uh, Philip Cochran was also gonna yep. be on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Philip is actually saying uh, thank you for the shout out that uh, you gave him. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. All these people that are in the community. Um, you know, it's such a great feeling to come across everyone. And I actually, I, I owe a lot of it to you guys in the chat, to Pusta, to Neil. Meeting all you guys has put me in this other place where I didn't think it was possible for so long. When I think I was at 20, uh, 2000, I was at 2000 subscribers for such a long time, you know, and I'm, I'm out there on my own. And I'm just like, I don't even know where this is going. I don't even know. I wasn't basically I wasn't getting any response to anything that I was doing. I mean, I was a little bit trickling in here and there, but I, I wasn't getting the type of response that it has literally happened from the moment I started to. Uh, how do I say this to help others out, to put others first, you know, and, and to give out a hand and to help people out. And it seems that once I started to do that, it kind of turned. And also, I think also putting my face, because <laughs> if you watched a lot of, like I said, 90% of my stuff back uh, in the past was all just music related and my face was never really on. Uh, so I think that my channel not having a personality, so to speak, was kind of hurting it. And it was only the moment that I decided to come and put myself in front of the camera which by the way it's not a hard thing and i was watching you guys talk uh beforehand about being nervous and yeah it's 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 really nerve-wracking if you've never done it before it's a very difficult thing and it's it's hard to get past that um and i remember initially trying to do videos where i would talk about my lenses and i remember just being so nervous and i would you know not be able to speak and i'm just like i'm at a loss i'm like what do i say now and you start to get that stage fright um, so what happened was I started to tell myself, well, you know, I can go out there and play in front of 100 people, play my instrument, no problem. 
And uh, I used to, in my older bands, I used to sing too. So I used to be able to do vocals and, and play. It's no problem. So I'm like, how can I bring that into where I am, can speak to the camera and uh, use that? So the fact that I started to do that just kind of brought in all this feedback from a lot of people. And I'm like, okay, now this is, uh, this is starting to work out now. And it kind of motivated me like, okay, now I can take it to the next level. Let me, let me bring it back to the photography because I had done the street photography before, except that what I was doing with the street photography before was I was taking my photo, pick the best ones, and I would make a slideshow and put some music to it. And uh, that was okay. But I think a lot of people dismissed it because they were like, okay, that's awesome, but, you know, okay, whatever. So now I'm going out there and I'm like, I'm putting myself in front and I'm saying, okay, this is what I'm doing. These are my settings. Let me know what you like. Tell me what if you like to do this kind of photography. This is what my settings are at, my aperture, you know, my ISO, just going into the technical. And now I'm getting a response and it's like, okay, cool. This is working. It motivates me. It keeps me going because it's helping other people out and I'm able to touch back. Uh, yeah. So I owe a lot of that to other I, people. I, I was so uh, amazed that you found that combination because you're right. Uh, oftentimes when I go through photographer YouTube channels it is it's either one or the other it's either we're talking about tutorials or reviews or it is more a slideshow type of uh, portfolio work right and and when you were uh, doing your uh, street series I thought what a great idea you know you kind of you put your face to the camera which is usually the other way around all the photographers are usually behind and never in front of it but you have it kind of like blog tutorial you know, photography portfolio all in one. And I think it's quite unique format. I haven't seen that format quite anywhere else, really. And I think it, you're, I agree, I agree that that's what draws people into them. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm really thrilled to be uh, bringing it uh, in that type of way to the, to the people um, that are, are into it and other photographers as well, because of the fact that for so long I was you know, outside of YouTube, uh, a lot of my friends who would look at my photography, I, even when I was, uh, taking photographs and filming bands, uh, those musicians in the bands would ask me like, Hey, you know, how can we get this, you know, type of quality from the cameras? What lens are you using? So I was actually getting a lot of questions even back then. It's just the fact that I'm like, well, formulating it to where I can speak it, you know, cause it's definitely not an easy thing to do. You know, when you're speaking live, a lot of things have to come together and you have to be very descriptive and you have to know how to speak, you know? So I, have, I, I actually read books on how to give speeches. Oh. <laughs> I, I know I, I, that might sound silly, but you know what? It actually works because even though you're in a room by yourself, you have to kind of pretend that there's an audience out there. And quite frankly, there is because over time on the rebroadcast, you know, more and more people are going to watch it. So it's like, yeah, you have to have a presentation and then you have to talk as if you were standing at a podium and you have to kind of make believe that that's what's happening, which I, I didn't make that correlation at first. And then I'm like, okay, so now what do I need to do? You know, so I had to go back and uh, kind of deconstruct what I was doing. I'm like, OK, so there's a lot of dead space when I'm speaking. I'm doing a lot of, uh, oh, uh, you know, the, all these little words and I might still be doing it now. So I'm still I'm trying to work on my speech so I can speak clearly word to word to word and in nice, clear sentences. So that also takes time. Uh, so there was a learning process to get it up to this point. So what you're seeing here now, <laughs> this person is some somebody else that wasn't quite like this, say like back in 2015. Mm -hmm. I was still trying to figure all this out. You know, it's a very hard thing to do to, you know, put yourself out there. And then, you know, there's a fear too, because you feel, you fear the criticism of others because other people, you know, that one of the first reactions, they don't understand something is they want to knock it down. You know, so in your mind, you're thinking, you know, oh, man, you know, are they going to laugh at me? Are they going to, you know, make jokes about me? You know, so you, you kind of have to learn how to bring that fear down, that anxiety, and just put it aside and be like, I'm just going to do it, you know, and no, I don't know everything, you know. So I, I always say that's like, hey, these are just my personal ideas. And hey, also, by the way, can you show me? Tell me what you do to do photos and to do video. Tell me so we can learn together, so we can work together. And once I started to do that, I started to min minimize that feeling of anxiety. 
and it started to feel better and better and better. I'm sure like Neil with your podcast, when you were doing your podcast at first, I'm sure there was probably a lot of anxiety there and, you know, yeah, yeah, it was. It's interesting too because um, we don't edit our podcast, so we knew right from the, from the first time we did it, there was a little comfort because it was just me and my wife Annalise in the room, so that makes it a little bit easier because there's there's no one else present. You know, I'm not out on the streets. I don't. No one's looking at me holding a camera or talking to myself. Right? It's just me across the table. But yeah, there was a lot of that. Um, uh, I guess I don't know exactly how to explain it, but more in my head about how I was going to sound to other people as opposed to just being myself. In the beginning, I was almost playing a character of myself because I wanted to sound in a way that people would accept that. And, you know, it didn't take long because from playing music before, I kind of realized I'm just, I just have to be me and just let that go. I, I wanted to touch on something that, that you said earlier and uh, Zenny and I were talking about it. Um, your, uh, your honesty and openness in not only wanting to help other people, but in, in describing your artwork and your inclusion and bringing other people into your artwork, you do that so well. And with, with such, um, such an honest, like connection with the camera that comes through when I'm watching you. I mean, it's like, I was saying that's, uh, watching your videos from before when I when I first dis discovered your channel and just immediately that feeling of like this guy's really cool in that really cool sense like this guy gets it and he's open and honest about sharing it and including you in the in his art um, in his artistic artistic creativity the creative process and I was saying it's so hard so many artists want to do that they want to include uh, their audience and their friends and what they do, but so few people can get it across honestly where it's not like talking down to somebody or over explaining something or making it sound like, oh, well, only I can do this because I'm art artistic guy or girl. Um, but you have such an, an openness and such a this is me and I really want to share me with you. And is that did that always come naturally to you? Or is that also something that you you worked on as far as I want to be as honest and open to myself and let that come through the camera. Well, I really appreciate your comments and, uh, and it really means a lot to me. It's uh, my deepest gratitude. I appreciate that very, very much, uh, especially coming from a musician too. Um, so learning to be myself is like a search. And so you're, you're constantly seeking and, you know, it, it, it takes time to build upon that. And, also, like you're talking about, like some some artists and some photographers have this uh, this ego, you know, and actually the ego hurts a lot of people because it puts them in this mindset that I I know everything and or they become jealous, you know, they become jealous of others and therefore they shut down. Um, so working on minimizing ego, which I'll be honest, I had it too, you know, I had it too when I was in my 20s, you know, I was like this thing where, you know. Hey, I'm awesome. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I feel funny saying that, you know, because I see that as a totally different person than who I am now, because it's something that you have to work on. And it took years, you know, you have to like bring it down, bring it down, bring it down to the level where I started to realize that being a musician and bringing yourself down to the level of like, hey, I don't know everything. And I started to open myself up. I started to meet all these other wonderful guitar players, all these other wonderful musicians. And because I was open and I would say, hey, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Can you teach me? You know, and they would be like, oh, yeah, sure. Let me, let me show you this, you know. So all that started to build up little by little by little. And so then, therefore, I took the same mentality and put it towards photography as well. So instead of being, you know, so if you're at a concert, you know, and um, doing concert photography, sometimes there's going to be three or four other photographers, some of them are paid by magazines to be there. So you're you're in the midst of all this competition, so to speak, you know, and some of them get to be on the area of the stage and do their shots. They got high end cameras and everything. And to be honest with you, that at first can really like hamper your mind because you're like, I got my little DSLR and look at what they got. They got a full frame. Canon, you know, the big 200 millimeter lens, and they're all the way up front. It's like, ah, I might as well just put my camera away. But I didn't. I changed my mindset. 
instead of doing that, I'm like, well, I'm going to try to get a different angle. I'm going to try a different approach and even bring my ego down even more and say, hey, approach those photographers. And I started to meet some of these photographers and come and find out, hey, they're so cool because they're like, hey, you're you're actually talking to me even though I'm the photographer and you're asking me questions. So I will ask so many questions, you know, for I started to learn more. And I'm like, oh, like, I'm like being open and not more or less being like a student and being like, hey, I don't know. Can you show me, you know, and, and showing that honesty to be like, hey, I just want to learn. You know, I want to see what you're doing. And then in turn, also helping other people. You know, if you see somebody out there who's uh, maybe just using their cell phone or they got a little point and shoot, I'm like, hey, you know, if you try this, you know, it's just a suggestion. Try, maybe try it like this, you know, and then people are like, oh, really? Oh, that's so awesome, you know, and the fact that I would open myself up to like, hey, even though I'm taking photos here of this, of these bands and stuff, doesn't mean I'm not like you, and it doesn't mean that at one point I wasn't shooting with a little point and shoot camera too, you know, mm-hmm. so, so all these things started to happen when you open yourself up to people that it, it's almost like a stacking of this positive energy that happens. It's like a flow. And you start to realize, hey, you know, and you, you, you know, so then I would compare myself to the way I used to be when I had ego. And I'm like, well, when I had ego, everything seemed very negative. And actually, people were kind of shying away from talking to me. So therefore, I had something to contrast my, to myself with. I'm like, OK, so if I open myself up and I'm friendly, I'm actually flowing with positive energy and people are more apt to come up to me and say, hey, what's up, you know? Can you show me something? Or, hey, I can go up to somebody and be like, hey, I I see you got a big camera and stuff and blah, 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 but can you show me? You know, I would like to learn. So doing all that, which also took years, then I can bring it all together now and be like, okay, now I can open myself up to, you know, the YouTube audience and be like, hey, this is what I do. And I can come from a place where, like, this is what I know how to do. And I can talk about it, you know, for a very long time and I can be honest, you know, and I can also reciprocate all this information that I've got learned throughout the years and be like, hey, you know, I'm just open and honest and I'm flowing with positivity. And as long as you keep doing that same thing, you know, for you guys, you know, the, w- what you're doing, that's why, you know, Pisa Studios, you know, every time I watch your live streams, you guys are so laid back and so cool you know i'm like wow this is awesome you know and you can sit there you can sit there and watch it for two hours i watched it for two hours i'm like this is awesome you know you guys are just chill you know and that's such a great thing yeah Uh, definitely thank you you. Uh, well we're trying to well we're not really doing anything but we are hoping that uh it's it's more of a you know friendly and laid back and kind of kick your feet up and and watch you know like same as people would long time ago uh watch their tv shows in the evening after work you know so right. i i hope that that's where we're going and getting sometimes <laughs> yeah no you guys are doing great and uh you know i also watched the one where you guys had uh, this hangout where you had all these different uh, musicians yeah, playing somebody playing drums and you guys are trying to get get like a song going together i'm like that is great i was watching them like this is so awesome i'm like why isn't this happening where like other musicians you know why don't they collaborate like this you know because it's great you know and like yeah sure you know like not not everybody was a professional i think uh was it the corn life he was playing on a a wooden um box i think it was i'm not i forgot what it was like a cajun drum he was playing it was corn life was nathan drums uh was doing uh, his drums and then brother dan uh chimed in as well with uh his uh, guitar actually the idea was born uh through our live with uh, neil and annalise uh remember neil we were talking Mm -hmm. about doing manic monday (laughs) wow yeah that's awesome yeah I, i i really enjoy that episode you know, it was like, wow, they're doing something great because, you know, they got all these people collaborating together, trying to create something, you know, cr- create some music together, you know, which you don't see a whole lot of. And it, and it didn't matter what level anyone was at. I know the other guy, he was playing guitar, he's playing electric guitar. And yeah. uh, they had the other kid, oh, the kid was playing guitar. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, you guys, you the way everybody was interacting with each other, it was so much fun, you know, and I enjoy watching all that. I'm like, this is great, you know. It's like I would love to see that more often, you know. And then not only that, like, the, you know, your interaction with the people on the chat, that's also another awesome thing, which early on when I was looking at live streams, you know, and I would jump in on 
I can't really remember what it was, but you jump in on some live streams and you say, hey, on the chat, you know, and uh, you get ignored. Mm. It's almost like they're right. having their own thing. It's like, so there'll be a group of people, they're having their own live thing, but then they're ignoring the people on the chat for whatever reason, unless they're like friends or whatever. But I'm like, hey, hello, I just jumped in. I don't know, I don't know what this is about. I want to learn. And you just get ignored. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, so, you know, you, you get this idea in your head, like, well, what's what's this all about, you know? So... You know, I started to gravitate towards more like, you know, people like I, like I am, like I'm open. You know, I, like I can go, I can go to any type of party or social event. It doesn't matter. And I will find people to talk to. You know, I'm, I'm social. You know, I'll be like, hey, you know, hi, who are you? What's your name? You know, and just that's just how I am. You know, so I, I'm the whole ignoring thing, especially when you're in a group, you know, like that's just, uh that just gets to me like okay so i'm here but you're gonna ignore me <laughs> you know like okay move on you know and uh so then the fact that you guys were interacting all together with all these musicians and you know interacting with the people on the chat which i see Pusa does a lot you know i think that's awesome because that's kind of how i am too you know so therefore you start to find all these people you know and, it, and it's just a great thing you know and uh i'm, I'm really grateful that you know for such a long time and i'm doing photography i'm like man i've been doing this for so long am I getting any type of response? You know, I'm like, what's going on? You know? So now that it is, you know, is that it's also about finding the right people to put it in front of them, you know? Yeah. And I, I mean, the, with us, I think it's a bit easier to, to do it because there are two of us. Uh, so, you know, like I can take care more of the chat and I love engaging with people. And, 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 and although we both are talking with our guests, uh, it's still more Andrew and me more on the chat. So we kind of have our roles, you know, so mm -hmm. that's why when I'm alone, I get lost because all of a sudden I have to do everything and I don't know how to handle it. So I do admire people who do that alone because there's lots of, you know, to, to create that engaging atmosphere is hard if you're alone, you know, and, and I, 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 we always say that it's not us, you know, only doing the show or us and the guests even, it's everything all together. I mean, without people in the chat, there would be nobody watching it, you know. Right. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it kind of feels counterproductive not to not to engage with people who are there to watch what you're doing, right? So we kind of right from the beginning uh, try to engage as much as possible. And, but I know like um, uh, Neil and Annalise do the same thing while they're doing their podcast too, which is quite uh, admirable as well. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna start following your Neil your podcast as well, and start to follow uh, uh, your accounts as well, just to you know to get get to know you a lot better. I'm sorry if I didn't you know up until this moment, uh, but because that's another thing I like to do with, with connecting with channels and people is that I I like the ongoing support. So basically, that means it's like if you're interested in me as much as I am interested in you, I'm gonna go back and research you and give you feedback on a lot of your stuff. You know, so like I said, I've been following Pusa for a long time. Uh, I've watched the photography on Instagram and that's what I, I'm about. You know, it's ongoing support is a very important thing in the community. And then we can support each other. That's a very important thing to me. And that's kind of where I'm coming from, you know, to help others out, to be like, hey, check this out. You know, so like I, I send this out to a lot of my friends who normally wouldn't check this the kind of stuff out you know they're musicians they're just all oh, they're focused on doing that but i'm like hey come check this out you know because these people are actually enjoying what i'm doing and it's like some of those photographs that they're looking at are you guys on stage <laughs> so you might want to come check this out you know like give it back you know so we'll see what happens you know because it there is you know not a lot but there is some that is like oh look at my band and my band only and that's all i'm about and forget everything else i'm like well you got to open yourself up you know i mean where will my channel be if i didn't open myself up if it was just like oh it's just this one band you know my channel really wouldn't be anywhere near where it's at you know but I, you know i flipped it around i'm like hey how about you look at all these other bands and check them out you know, because I know some of these guys, you know, and they need the exposure, you know, so bringing it down to the level where you're engaging and you're sharing with everybody and you're helping other people out, you know, like I w I'm going to share Neil's podcast, I'm going to share Pusa's channel and do as much as I can and do my part, you know, so you're, you're revolving that positive, this goes back to the positive energy thing, 
and you keep that flow going and, and bigger things will come. And then you're going to find more people in that same realm. And that's how it grows. Yeah, and I, I love it uh, so much about that networking. I mean, YouTube or Instagram or any other, other social media is the same as, uh, you know, in business or in, in regular life, so to say. Networking and collaboration is at the base of it all. Like, uh, you know, a great example today, I didn't have Andrew today, so I could reach out to Hila, and he was the Neil dream to <laughs> come on, you know, and, and because, as, as Neil was saying, we clicked so well right from the first live stream, right, Neil? No, oh, yeah. No, I mean, it was it was definitely that uh, we had that feeling, I think all four of us, where uh, we started talking and within five to 10 minutes, it just felt like we were hanging out with old friends. And it was when when you asked if I would fill in, it really it had that, you know, it gave me the warm, fuzzy feeling of a friend saying, hey, I could really I could really use you right now uh, to make this uh, a little bit, you know, more relaxing and more fun. And it just felt good that I'm like, oh, it is it is friendship it's not just something made up in the in the youtube world it's like we're actually friends and we get to do this and it, it was great it was uh it meant a lot to me well thank you and and that's i think it, it's not that's why we're trying to do these live streams as well it's not just about youtube and, and the channel although that's what how we get connected in the first place but I think it's much more beyond that, and what we usually say, say is uh, getting up close and personal with the people behind the channel, because the channel, although we spend uh, sometimes a lot of time, you know, creating things on it or social media in general, it's it's still lives and people behind it, and and you know that that's where the connection is, and when it goes beyond YouTube or or Instagram or whatever social media is, it it's so much more worth it. You know, like when you get to connect with people outside of the screen as well, so to say. Yeah, and, and, and like uh, I'm sorry, and like Frank was saying, uh, I think I think, um, and Andrew probably uh, went through this too. But in playing music, especially starting out young, you really do need the support of other musicians because usually there's a bunch of you that kind of start at the same time, and everyone's kind of played in other people's bands, and you need bands that are going to open for you or you need to open for other bands. And so you really realize like, if we can all help each other out, we're all going to move forward. Now, obviously there's those, those bands that take off and you know, you're like, Oh, that's, that's awesome. Wish it was me, but good for them. Um, and when we started the podcast and even a little bit in the YouTube community, we noticed it was, a, it was a little more selfish. It was a little more like, listen to my podcast. Uh, but don't listen to anyone else's or watch my YouTube video uh, or my YouTube channel because I'm the best at, at freaking unboxing dog stuff, you know, crazy stuff that we do. As opposed to like, like, no, you know, it's okay to go ahead and promote others. And I think that the one thing that uh, Pusha Studios does, and, and Frank, you do it on your channel with the photography as well as YouTube, is say, no, let's all, let's all do it together. You know, somebody... It's if somebody doesn't want to watch my channel or listen to my podcast or listen to my music, me not letting them or trying to hold them captive as a as a listener or a watcher isn't going to make them enjoy what I do anymore. So I always think like it might not be me. You might find somebody else that you enjoy more, but you'll always have this good feeling about our show because it was like, oh, yeah, they turned me on to this. And to me, that that seems uh, it seems the the benefits of this this community and of finding people like you and Zenia and Andrew and a lot of the people that are in the chat tonight that everyone's like yeah we're just having fun and and trying to help each other out and we're going to we're going to end up where we're supposed to be one way or the other and uh it's 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 very uh it's very appreciative i mean i very much uh, appreciate meeting people like you and Zenia and Andrew because it it reminds me that there's there's hope in this chaotic um sort of uh trying to be competitive in a non-competitive way about things you know you want to be good i want to be good i want people to like me but i don't want to take away from anybody else to get that right right well said, yes i agree <laughs> yeah so it, in collaboration i think that's where the success really boils down to because you see other like bigger youtubers they do it too you know mm -hmm. they collaborate together all the time you know so you know you, there's something to learn from that it's like okay so if they can do it then we we need to do it too and it, actually when you're smaller you need it more than they do you know because it's like well where are we going to get the audience from you know so as you know like say neil and pusa bringing your audience the people that follow you guys 
And then now my audience is going to come to you guys now because they're going to be like, hey, they're going to be interested. They're like, well, what was that that you were on? You know, so they're going to research you guys, you know. So there brings that there's three of us here now that are going to bring some people together, you know, and then it just keeps rolling over. So that's where the key is. It will be silly if I just went on live. If I went on live by myself right now, it wouldn't be like this. Mm-hmm. You know, it would just be like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> you know, that's it. Where's everybody else at? You know what I mean? It's like you're alone in a room, basically. So this is the key, you know, is to do it like this, uh, to reach out to a bigger audience, you know. And I, I'm excited. It's this is just the beginning, you know, because we've only really started doing this uh, early on. You know, I started live streaming back in August, and uh, it's only been a short time, you know. And then for it to go this far, you know, and actually, uh, I've been also live streaming on Facebook. I don't know if you guys do any live streaming on, on Facebook and or, or, or like Instagram or anything else. Mm, I some I tried a couple on Instagram on stories. Uh, I don't know. I, I fa- uh, Facebook is kind of a little bit dead. I, I, we still do some posting there, but it's mostly because of the local like Montreal community and our business part, so to say. But uh, Instagram, I tried, but I just don't feel comfortable. It's different than, you know, like when we talk with the guests like with you and Neil today, it's, it's different. We're talking mostly about about you, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about you guys, too. You know? I, I, I see it as a three. A three yeah, but, but you were talking attack. about us, you know, we we're talking about, about <laughs> and, and I, I think that's a part of it that gets me, too, is that I, I'm always putting in, putting people ahead of me because it's in my nature. I, I don't know exactly where that comes from it just comes from my deepest part of my soul that sometimes it overtakes and it's like hey look at them or you know like even when i'm with friends i'm like hey you want to meet my friend over here you guys should talk you know like <laughs> this is something that happens you know and I, I i keep forgetting that i'm the one being interviewed <laughs> <laughs> exactly. oh boy it's amazing human quality but i like i wouldn't be able to do i think lives on my own i just wouldn't know what to talk about like who is interested what did i have you know i i, I don't know even what to talk about like i tried a couple of times and i ended up like i don't know what to say so i just came up on it uh, but uh, i don't know maybe give it a try again how do you do it neil with on your podcast um <laughs> Well, we, we've done a little bit with the Instagram, but the, so the podcast, I mean, we actually started live streaming the podcast because of you guys, because of uh, you and Andrew, because we weren't doing a lot of live streaming. We were recording the podcast on video and then putting it on on our uh, our old YouTube channel just because some people could listen to it at work because of whatever their IT department, they could get YouTube. So they're like, well, can you put your podcast up there? So we thought, yeah, we'll set up a little camera and just record it. And then when we did started watching your live streams, um, and then decided like, oh, this could be fun because we don't edit anyway. So we can just have the camera that we normally use and just have it go to the live stream. Um, and it would save me a step because then I wouldn't have to upload the the video of the podcast. It would just already be there. And I'm like, anything easier in the editing department for me is the way I'm going to go. So that's really what got us into live streaming. And then we decided, um, you know, we do the behind the vlog once every month where we give like a real honest look about how vlogging has been going for us because we had, we had the podcast. We've been doing that for four years. It surprisingly took off and got popular and we didn't know that was crazy. So when we came to the YouTube channel, we're like, oh, this will be a piece of cake. Nothing to it. Oh, we'll just start a channel and everyone's going to watch. And then we realized like, oh, it doesn't work that way at all. <laughs> so we thought we'd once a month, we'd just get together and say, you know, th- this is what we were hoping. This is where we fell on our face. This is where we stepped on our tongues. You know, this is something that worked. And then again, from Pusha, we, we decided, uh, yeah, let's live that because then other people can get involved and we can share these stories. Um, and it's been, it's been a lot of fun, but it's also, uh, it's also been a huge learning curve. Like Frank, you were saying about, um, how well, um, Xenia and Andrew do with the, um, the chat. And we, we had a, we're, we're getting better, but we had a hard time with the first few times with the podcast. Cause that's not what the podcast was. Cause it was just my wife and I talking, we oh, weren't wow. used okay. to including other people. So, uh, now we are, we're learning how to do that. And it's nice because everyone's been so patient and we've, you know, we've had people come over from the podcast world into the YouTube world and, and that's been, been a big help, but it, it, it is, we're really enjoying now that interaction and connecting with, with people in the chat. It's been, it's been a lot of fun, but a huge learning curve. 
That's great. So, uh, do you, so you guys have a, I, I never done a podcast before. So you guys have a big audience in, in the podcast. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We were, we were lucky. I mean, we just, we just happened to be at the right place at the right time and it kind of took off and we didn't, ex we didn't even start it for that. We started it for, uh, just to kind of share our stories with family and friends and our family and friends don't even listen, which is hilarious. Yeah. And so it just kind of, it just kind of took off and, uh, yeah. And so, and that's really what helped us like to, to get, uh, I mean, not that we have a ton of, uh, subscribers, but you know, we, we started this YouTube channel last September and that's really what helped us get to where we, we are now just because so many of the people that listen to the podcast, just subscribe just to kind of help us out. They're like, Oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pop over there and do that for you. So. Oh, cool. So, yeah. so is there like a, a, like a particular like website that's run? I don't know how for, uh, for podcast. So, yeah. Um, so you usually, so there's a hosting site and you upload it to that and then you have an RSS feed and that feed goes to like uh, iTunes, it'll go to Google play, it'll go to all these podcasts. So S Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, iHeartRadio, whatever you use to listen to any podcast and you can search and listen, you can pretty much find anybody's, uh, anybody's podcast that way. But it's, awesome. yeah, so it's just, it's hosted on one site, but it, it goes off an RSS feed. Gotcha. Awesome yeah. after being on your podcast, guys, because I use Castbox on my phone uh, to do mm -hmm. podcasts, and and I searched for you guys, and I'm like, oh my god, we're on it! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And I, I was, it was like showing my son, oh my god, we're on it! You know, it's a, it's it's just I don't know, it's so different because on YouTube we're so much used to it because we're doing it ourselves, but a podcast is almost like going on the actual TV. <laughs> Felt like. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. It was funny. It's weird uh, to get noticed from the podcast. Like we were, we were in Jamaica one year, and we, I walked into the gym, and somebody said, "I listened to your podcast," and wow. we were like, "Wait, <laughs> what?" Yeah, it was it was bizarre. Cool. Yeah, it was, cool. it was it was fun. Um, and it's you know, like I said, it's it's been it's been a fun. Uh, experience and and a big steep learning curve coming over to youtube but but the cool thing is we uh, immediately met you know because we did our our own little thing for a while and then we immediately met or, or i found your channel frank uh we immediately friend met uh Zenny and andrew and a bunch of others i mean i'm leaving a ton of people out but since you know we're here having the conversation right, right. that really made me feel comfortable like watching your videos and looking at your art and hearing your music, because I mean, I, I enjoy the, the type of music you play. Awesome. Um, it just felt like, oh, cool. My my people are also here. You Should know, you, not you not. Have a band, Neil? Sorry to interrupt. You have a band? No, not at all. Not right now. Oh. I haven't played. I haven't played in a band in about five years. I still play at home and do recording and stuff like that. Um, but but it felt like, oh, you know, my people are here too, and it just it made us more comfortable to feel like okay, we can be our goofy selves because people are going to get it. You know, no matter whether we're we're making funny drinks or, you know, Anna at least is doing, I don't know, makeup stuff or the dogs ripping out dog doors out of our wall, whatever it is, it's it it feels like, oh, there are going to be those people that get it and get us. And it, it feels really good. Definitely. So uh, you were talking earlier about blogging and then feeling nervous about talking to the camera uh, when you're out on the streets. Uh, do you, do you, uh, I don't know if Pisa, do you guys do any blogging? I don't I don't know if I've ever seen you guys doing that. No, actually we don't. And and we were kind of thinking ab uh, about, uh, we always said, no, we're not going to do it. The same as we were saying about lives, you know, no, no, live. See, like, <laughs> I, 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 know you, I know you guys know uh, S2W Deans. Oh, yeah. They're they're on vacation right now. And they did a live stream from their vacation spot. Oh, my God. I think they're in Hawaii or something. Oh, That's awesome. I mean, they're in a desert somewhere. I don't know. It looks like a desert to me, but this blue ocean, I'm like, Wow, I want to be there. <laughs> you know, it just looks so beautiful and hot. You know, oh man. So yeah, it's it's pretty cool. But when I do my, when you see guys see me doing my street uh, vlogs and stuff, this is the the little camera I'm using right here. What is it? Can you tell more about it? Okay, so this is uh, the Yi 4K action camera. It's basically almost the same size as a GoPro. Uh, but I love this thing, you know, so when you're when you're walking, see, see how much it, it takes away from that having like a big DSLR. I know you see people that do vlog, they're carrying a big camera. This yeah. makes it a lot easier because it's even smaller than the phone, you know, and the stabilization is super. And then you get a, a wide angle. So when you guys are watching my street photography, this is what I'm using right here. So I'm oh. carrying I'm carrying this to film myself like, you know, walking. And then I got my uh, 
I got my other camera, which is this one here. This is a Sony a6300. This is what I do my photos with. Um, so it's say if you wanted to blog with this, this seems more <laughs> weird, you know, if you're walking around like, Hey, you know, but if you're doing this, a lot of the times, even I can hold it like this. People just think that I'm talking to my hand. So you know, he's talking to his hand. <laughs> you know, is that even a phone? You know? Yeah. So that's, that's, this is what I use. And it's actually pretty cheap. It's uh, it only cost, uh, when I bought it, it was 200 bucks, but now you can get them for like 150. Oh. And the, the video quality is amazing. Well, you guys seen it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That's, yeah. I, I saw that you're using your either your phone or I was assuming your SLR, so that's why I. Uh, oh, here, here's a here's a little secret about me. I don't own a cell phone. Oh. Yeah. I was yeah, amazed yeah. when I when I <laughs> when I heard that uh, uh, watching uh, Lady Borgia the other night. Oh. You it was <laughs> yeah. it was. It was great. I think I think you blew her mind with that because she was she was <laughs> totally enamored with that. A lot of a lot of people, I always get a weird reaction. Actually, the last communication device that I own was a pager. Motor oh, nice. Was, it was the size of a, a garage door opener. Uh -huh. I, used to, I used to get the little numbers on there and they go to a payphone. Yeah. <laughs> you had all the different codes, like what the numbers meant. You hold it upside down. It says hello. You're like, all right. <laughs> I still have it too. It's sitting in my closet somewhere. That's it's great. Hysterical. I actually envy you, to be honest. The guy, I oftentimes think there is so much of attention that taken away and i just want to switch off and just put it away somewhere so nobody calls and i just stop <laughs> everything. i have disabled all the notifications from social media because i just don't want them if i want i can go and check it out myself but i i i envy you i don't yeah <laughs> How yeah it, it was you? it was a decision that i made and i just decided that's what I'm, i mean i i obviously have pc and i have the connection you know but um I, I want to be in tune with my surroundings when I'm out and about. And I also read, I read a lot of books. So when I'm traveling to go to work or back and forth, you know, I'm, I'm usually reading a book of some sort, you know, and, um, and also I, I uh, this either might sound strange or not, but I'm also looking at my surroundings and, and if I have my camera, I should have my camera most of the time, but I'm also walking around kind of like this because I'm looking for frames, I'm looking for different symmetry, I'm looking for different shots, so I'm pretending, you know what I mean, because you, when you're doing that action, when you are going to go do photography, when you are going to uh, go for the decisive moment, as they call it, you all those motor skills that you're doing on your own, and it might seem strange to people, and, and it's not like I'm doing it in the crowd going like this, <laughs> you know, because mm -hmm. that might seem really weird. Um, but I practice, you know, so I'm practicing and I'm, I'm looking for leading lines. I'm, I'm looking for symmetry. And then when I am ready to go do my photography, all that just actually just comes together. And I'm like, okay, here it is, you know, now it's time, you know, and it just makes it a lot easier than if, if you didn't practice, you know, so not having a phone or having a distraction, uh, I'm able to concentrate more on those things, you know, as far as creating. Uh, and then, you know, when I come home, then I'm like, okay, let me, uh, let me check my Facebook, let me check all my other stuff, you know, and, and get back to that, you know. But if I'm out and about in the environment, I have to be engaging my mind to, you know, learn as much as I can. So if I'm either reading or I'm paying attention to my surroundings or just enjoying, the, you know, the sun, the sunset or whatever, because a lot of people, uh, it's sad to say, you know, but what I see is like, you know, a lot of people are staring at their phones and there's a beautiful sunset happening right now. <laughs> you know, it's like, mm -hmm. if, if you just look up, you know, it's happening right now and it goes away like that, you know, it's orange, it's blue, then it's nighttime, you know? Yeah. And uh, I don't want to miss that, you know, even if I'm not even, even if I'm not taking pictures, I want to see it, you know? And you know, unfortunately, a lot of people are just paying attention to that phone and it's like, uh, you're missing it, you know, it's not going to come back, you know, to, this was today only. <laughs> so that's another reason why I don't have, and I'm, I'm knocking cell phones, I'm not knocking people that have, you know, that's not what it's about. Everybody has the option, you know, but I, I just like to be in touch with my environment. Yeah, I wanted, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Zenia. Yeah. Go ahead. I wanted to ask uh, Frank, when you go out and you do your on the street photography, like how many pictures are you, are you taking in in a given session and when you go out do you i know i know i was watching um the your last video and and uh, 
you know, you were saying you're looking for the composition and the framing and the light and all that, but before you go out, do you have an idea like, I, you know, I'm going to look more for people or I'm going to look more for buildings or I'm gonna look more for this, or do you just kind of go out and just shoot and just open to whatever the, that day, the weather, the surroundings gives you. And, and again, like, uh, like how much do you just shoot all the time or, or, or do you have like, I'm not, I don't want to shoot more than, uh, you know, a hundred pictures. Cause I know after that, my brain's going to be a little bit all over the place and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to see things as clearly as I would like to. Okay. Yeah. That's a very good question. Thank you for asking that. Okay. So what I do is I usually plan out what I'm about to do. So early on was a lot of focus attention on concert photography. So therefore I would watch what other concert photographers would do. I would research, I would read books on that. And then my main mission was, okay, so I'm at the concert now. And then I bring all that knowledge together and totally focus on whatever the con concert is gonna provide and that I'm getting those shots. And I, I got really good at doing that. So then bringing that mentality back to like, okay, so if I'm gonna go do landscape shots, okay, so I spend the day researching and then learning and then feeding my mind that and then putting myself in this mind frame that okay I'm going for landscapes only and then go and take those pictures and a lot of the times when you do that when you have a focused intent mm -hmm. you realize that you come up with exactly kind of what, what you're looking for I mean not exactly but it's almost like you're aiming it's like you're you know it's like if you're playing baseball you know you practice you know getting those home runs you know and then that's what you're going to focus on you might actually get one, you know, so um, and I used to do HDR photography. I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but that's when you uh, you're combining uh, three sets of exposures, the dark normal exposure, then a, a highlight exposure, then you bring them all together into one photo. And uh, that was a big thing for me. And then so therefore I will go out and search for that. So when I started the street photography back up, and so my main focus is I'm looking for an interesting subject. I'm looking for a natural action first off. So I'm looking for something that's going to be natural that doesn't look forced, you know, and I'm looking also for the light to make sure where the light is at and that I'm getting a good composition. And um, lately I've been really focused on dynamic symmetry and that's where I, I don't know how quite how to describe it, but that's in, in, in layers and it's also in the de deconstructing of the frame. So, and that's a, it's kind of a difficult thing to do, but what I wanted, what I wanted to start practicing with, I want to take a, a little LCD and then cut out a plastic piece and draw out like different, um, different diagrams. Uh, they call it the, the golden ratio and draw it on there. And I want to carry that around and then learn to see that, that symmetry in the shots, you know, and then try to combine that with either people, light, buildings, structures, uh, you can do it with all kinds of stuff. So when you bring that together, even though the person may be seeing a photo of, you know, uh, it could be, I don't know, uh, a car or something up against the building, and that can be a, a really bland shot or it can be a really interesting shot if you have that symmetry in the background. You can do, also do it in cropping, you know, which I do in my photos. You know, if I, if I saw something, and I shot it, but then it's not at the right angle, you know, you can bring it back and put it in the right perspective, you know, and most people might not even think of that, but it does a lot, you know, to where, where you're putting your subject, where it's either in the middle, the left-hand side of the right, but I'm, I'm veering off what you had asked. Um, <laughs> normally, I don't shoot over, I try not to go over 50 or 100. Okay. I, not, I dial it back. Because what ends up happening is that I'm very critical of what I'm doing. Um, so if all those elements don't come together, if I don't get the right composition, if it's not in focus, uh, if it's not the right lighting, I'm very hard on myself and I just delete it. And okay. I know that might seem rough. And, and actually, that's very hard for a lot of people to do because it's like when you're taking photos, you're like, oh, that's my shot. And I love it, <laughs> you know. But then you have to really like put yourself in a place that's like, well, is that to yourself, you got to be like, is that an awesome shot? Is that something that you're going to look at and you're going to put it on your wall and you'll be like, wow, that's really speaking to me. You know, so if you are if you put yourself in that mindset, you realize that the number of photos starts to go down. 
you know, and then you end up, you know, and I'll be honest, you know, sometimes I do end up with a lot, you know, but I'm very critical. And I'm also like, as I'm taking my shots, I'm going back on the spot and making those decisions, whether it's focused or not, that I get everything in the right composition. If it's not, then I just automatically delete it. But then there's even further deletion because once I get home and I'm on my computer and I'm editing all that stuff, if it doesn't look good, then I'm also cutting it down. So that's during the editing process. And then the next cut down process is when it finally decide to post to show it to the public. There's more cutting there too. You know, so oftentimes you're only getting like, you know, say 10, 15 photos at most. And sometimes I even think that's a little bit too much. Wow. That's cool. How often do you go uh, out with the intent of taking photos? I go out. Uh, for example, like the, the, the series that I started to do, um, the weather hit and it was really nice out, you know, which, you know, that's also a misnomer, you know, I'm, you know, I don't want to put that out there, like only, only go do photographs when it's sunny out, <laughs> you know, you can do photographs anytime, you know, at nighttime too. Um, so once I started to, uh, you know, really focus in on street photography, um, I decided to go after work and then on my days off, you know, and oftentimes, I'm out there for, say, depending on my day, if I work, then I'm only out there for two, three hours. If I have a day off, then I can spend a good six hours out there, you know, just uh, looking around and, and finding opportunities and hopefully to catch those moments as they come. Uh, but then there's times I also have to balance my life out with my music as well, uh, because once those shows start to come. So I'm playing a couple of festivals uh, coming up uh, very shortly. Then I have to stop. Then I have to focus and then I have to put down the camera and be like, okay, now it's time to focus. And then I have to go back to practicing my instrument, uh, practicing with the band and then put full focus on getting up to speed with putting on a live performance, which that's a whole different animal as opposed to photography. So I always try to give it a balance and, uh, you know, sometimes that you know it, it, it takes a lot of time, uh, but if you have passion and devotion, you figure out where you need to put that time and effort. Um, so if I'm focused on music, then I really don't go out much. You know, I just I kind of like put the camera down. And it's like okay, now I have to play my guitar. Now I have to focus on practicing. You know, I'm practicing a full life set because I'm in two bands actually. I'm in a band called Blur the Wolf. And I'm also in another band called Asphyxiator. And each band requires uh, at least two, three hours of just my own playing for my own practice to deliver a live performance. And then it also requires the gathering of a practice session with the rest of the guys, which is usually about two hours. So once all that starts to happen, then I have to totally focus on that. So there, so there's gonna be times where I don't have time to do the photography thing. Uh, I, I wonder sometimes how do you manage to balance it all? Uh, it, so, it sounds whatever you're taking on, you're fully devoted to what you're doing at that time, you know, learning how to do it uh, and, and putting all your focus on, to it, like all your energy to it. But at the same time, you do so many things. And, and my question is, how do you balance them so you can do all of those things? <sighs> Well, when I was younger, um, I used to party a lot. You know, uh, I don't drink anymore and I don't I don't do a whole lot of partying. And uh, that ended when I was 25. I stopped uh, doing all the type of partying. So I drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> 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 and uh, um, oftentimes I, I, this is another thing that might sound strange, but uh, I literally get up at five in the morning every day, even on my days off. Uh, I get about six hours of sleep and sometimes five wow. and then the, the rest is just really focusing on uh well, i mean i also have to take in consideration that i have my job and uh you know that also um you know takes a considerable amount of energy but i i'm a, I'm, a very, I'm very strict on myself as far as what i'm doing and what i'm focused on you know and i think a lot of people I shouldn't say a lot of people, everybody can do what they want, but for myself, I feel that if I'm going to spend two hours watching a movie, is that going to be beneficial to my 
creative process or are those two hours going to be more beneficial if I practice my guitar or if I just pick up my DSLR and start, start taking photos in my apartment and trying to figure out how to get better shots you know so once you start to condense all that time and now granted yeah i'm probably missing out on some great movies you know? <laughs> <laughs> or or baseball games or football games you know and i'm not knocking people that do that's fine you know and it's like a leisure time thing but at the end of the day that's time so when you dial all that time back and you start to focus it in on doing the things in a creative manner like i do and you start to work towards that, then you start to realize every all that time starts to stack up, you know, and then it may seem to other people that like, wow, you're doing so much, you know, and I, my response is like, wow, you know, you can too. Because mm-hmm. I'm not different than you are. I'm a human being. I have a brain just like you have a brain. It's just how you manage your time and what you want to focus it in on, you know, and uh, like I said, I don't want to, judge other people for what they do everybody can do what they want i'm saying for myself i just have a a very um a very strong work ethic and i do with my job too you know some people think like wow you're you're crazy (laughs) the way you work i'm like well i work like that because i work like that with almost everything that i do um i try to work with focused intent and start accomplish finish and move on and then keep the same process going you know and it it might seem a little difficult to a lot of people to do that but uh, it's a training that takes place you know and uh, i used to i used to party a lot i used to waste my time a lot and uh, i wasn't doing all this you know and i was trying to figure out where's all my time going like well when you were out you know at the bar until three in the morning and now you're tired and now yeah, you're then you got up. recovery day, right? <laughs> now you're not waking up until noon on Saturday. Right. Where did all that time go? You know, so when I had stopped with all my addictions and stuff, I started to rework my brain and started to really think about what I need to do to focus myself on my art. And, you know, here we are, you know, meeting wonderful people like your creators, like yourself, you know, and I wouldn't be able to do that if I wasn't hard on myself to put my work out there. It seems like you you really do thrive with the discipline that you give yourself. That it that it, that is part of your creative process. Whether it's for uh, you know music, uh, whether it's for your photography, or even I mean I know work isn't necessarily art for some people, but some some people take that kind of passion in in their you know nine to five jobs or whatever your hours are. Um, but it definitely seems like you thrive on that on that discipline that you that you bring to yourself. Thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah, I also spend a lot of time learning, you know, and, and like teaching myself. Um, so a lot of people sometimes use the excuse of well, I didn't go to college or I didn't I didn't take lessons in that, you know, and the hard reality is that uh, teaching can be also be self teaching. You know, you can get those books and now in the, the world that we're in where you can, you know, search out. There's actually college seminars that you can watch for free. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of what is your level of passion for learning. You can learn anything you really want. You can teach yourself a whole new language if you really put your mind to it. You know, but you, it really has to come from you. So if, if you tell yourself, oh, well, I didn't go to school or uh, uh, college tuition is this much, you know, well, uh, I, I have to disagree with all that. And I have to say, well, what are you doing? And it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter how old you are. You never stop learning. You, you, as long as you seek it, the information is there for you. The books are there. The seminars are there. The people are out here to help you. If you seek it out, then you can learn. Uh, what I do is not magical. You know, the photography that I take is not magical. Anyone can do it. The guitar I play is not magical. It's not me. Anyone can do it. You just have to have the passion to learn and then to transmute it into yourself and play that instrument take a time and you too can get to that level anyone can it's you have to really believe in yourself and you really have to go out there and say that i still want to learn and it doesn't matter how old you are it doesn't matter about money that's uh, i have to disagree that's just you have to go out there and you, you'll find the stuff you know if i found the books and everything i needed to do it then anyone can that's amazing. I, I'm listening <laughs> in awe of what you're talking about. It's it's uh, 
you're and you're so right there are so many resources even more so nowadays uh with internet you know and uh, as you said with all the workshops and stuff that is available out there um the pe- it's not the unavailability uh it's it's sometimes uh, maybe laziness that pe- people uh complain that they can't do anything and they can't learn yeah, and, and again i don't want to come off serious so don't, don't take my you know I, I sometimes i get very passionate and might seem serious but i'm not but I'm, I'm, I'm i'm actually very laid back <laughs> how um what would you tell somebody who like are in that transition now you know they would they would want to maybe do that leap and do something more serious and and more focus on their life and and achieve something what would be the first thing to do to jump over that bridge um i found in myself uh seeking out and looking at, you know i also watch a lot of motivational videos and i also look at other people who uh, do self-teaching for self-awareness and self-motivation. So that also comes from watching a lot of that and reading a lot of books about that. Um, it has to come from within, you know, and uh, one thing that I would suggest if, if for people who are, you know, people, I also see uh, YouTubers sometimes and other creators say they hit a rut or they, they're stuck creatively. Um, one thing that really helped me push things forward for me is to write things down see i have a i have a notebook uh, so i have a, a a night journal where i write everything down it's almost like a diary and i have a bunch of other different notebooks uh, so what you want to do is write things down and uh, it's almost like you Did we lose him? It was funny. I was I was gonna ask, and then I thought, well, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm not hearing him because you were you were still looking at the screen, and I thought, oh, Zenia can hear Frank, and I can't. I think, I think we lost Frank. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe he can uh, can try and recollect. Maybe then, yeah, because I can yeah. still see him on. I see him frozen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Uh, I think it's gonna reboot for him probably. Yeah, but what? what uh, but the things. I mean, this is when we were talking earlier, and I said he's got that that cool factor and that that way of talking about these things without sounding like he's talking down or being sanctimonious or pretentious. You know, you, yeah. you, he says like, "Oh, I don't have a cell phone," but you never feel like he's judging you because you do have a cell phone. It's just the choices that he makes, and I think it's that's such a great quality for people to have to be able to be open and honest and express their feelings without making it sound like they're saying. Oh, you're a dumb dumb for having a cell phone. You know what I mean? Yeah, like he said, like the choice is yours, basically. You know, it depends what you want to achieve. And and yeah, you're right. It's so free. Like, well, I I do this, but you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. It's he, he's like the person. Like, if he was surrounded by a bunch of people on their cell phones, he wouldn't be mad at anybody. He'd be like, nah, all right, that's what's going on right now. Whatever. Oh, that's amazing. I, I was listening with like really, really inspirational. And sometimes I think maybe we need that push, you know, uh, just to focus our time. And I think for me, for I, I, I find it hard to balance. Well, okay, we need me time, but we also need to do things to grow ourselves and how to how to get that not burning out, but still growing. You know, that's my question lately. Sure. Especially like when you, you know, you need your own personal time, you know, you need time with Andrew, you need time with the family, you need time for the business, you need time for, for fun and, you know, YouTube and live streams, you need time to be healthy and, and you need, you know, so all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I'm, I'm starting to run out of time, you know, with all these things. And it's the picking and choosing and, and how much, how much are you going to take away from this pile of time to add to this other pile of time? And it, it can, it can, it can feel overwhelming at times that, uh, you know, Annalise and I don't have kids. We, we have the, our little crazy dogs, but it's always funny because I feel like I don't have enough time. And then I look at, you know, uh, people like you and Andrew and other that have kids and think like, how the heck do you do it? I wouldn't even be able to get out of the house if I had kids. Cause I'd be like, what soccer and you want to eat and now you need clothing and you have to go to school. I, I don't know. I don't know how parents find the time. I don't know how my parents, I don't even know why my parents did it, but I don't know how they did it. It's just, it's crazy. 
Uh, yeah, I, I think is the more people have, the more they can do it. I mean, it's always is like that. I mean, and you guys have your own things as well. Like for us, uh, advantage, I think we work from home mostly, and then our okay. events are outside. But you know, the office work is at home, so it kind of saves a lot of time for you uh, both. You you have to you know get up and go and <laughs> that right. Right. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting how everybody has. Yeah, I guess, I guess in our in our the little worlds that we create, you know, for ourselves, uh, everybody has their little uh, their pros and cons of like you know staying home versus you know uh, going uh, going to a job. And then some people would say, well, oh well, you know, going to the job is part of my social thing, so that's kind of fun too. Or somebody else who goes to a job would say, oh my gosh, I'd do anything to work from home if I could just work from home, you know. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it, it's the little little rhymes and reasons of uh, of where our time goes and where we can make up a little bit here and there. And the Bits of Real Panther was calling it how to eliminate procrastination. Sorry about that. Oh, no worries. Welcome back. Yeah, the computer crashed. I knew at one point, I, I think it has to do something with sitting idle. Mm. It sits idle and I'm not moving the cursor around, it, uh, it crashes. Oh, okay, no <laughs> <Yeah>. problem. <clears throat> we are glad that you are back, that you made it back. Sorry, everybody on the chat, anybody watching me. <laughs> uh, Technical issues. I lost you in the right in the middle of the most interesting part. About <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, boy, boy, boy. Of writing things down you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So basically, you write things down uh, and you make an, ass uh, an assessment of what you want to do and where you need to make changes um now i don't know if a lot of people do that uh, but that's what has helped me uh keep myself motivated and then keep me on track because when you start to write things down and you have them in front of you and you have a, a notebook and you can look at it every day it, it also reminds you that hey, this is what i need to do and also like i also write down a, a list of tasks of things that I need to accomplish and you know you cross them off as you go along you know and it's not something you show off to people or you you tell people that you do it's something that you're actually doing for yourself and uh, I found that doing that you actually start to accomplish more because oftentimes I would set a bunch of projects in front of me you know whether it's like photography or music and you know you get distracted you know like you're saying you get distracted by your phone or somebody else you know friends call you let's hang out you know and i'm not saying you know i i I'm, i hang out with friends and, and still do all those things you know as well but you know having something concrete written down and say i need to accomplish this you start to really like okay you got to do this you know cross it off okay next cross it off and you start to realize like wow you're actually getting a lot done because you're you're reminding yourself as opposed to if you didn't remind yourself uh, as far as for me, uh, what was holding me back a lot was like I, I had all these plans inside my mind, and in my mind I knew that I had to do it, and then I went the next day or a week later I'm like, well, what was it that I was, was needing to do? I was going to do something, but I forgot, you know. So now it's it's a thing where I I write things down, and even with writing music, it's the same way, where. I will have these melodies, and I'm, I'm sure Neil can probably relate to this. You have these melodies that you have in, in, in you know, say you're at work or something, or you're, you wake up and you're like, oh, that's this melody. I can play on the guitar, and you forget it because you didn't write it down, you mm -hmm. know. So now I've gotten into the habit that I write a lot of stuff down, and you're going to end up with a lot of little loose pieces of paper and notebooks, but you start to realize that, that your progress is stacking because you're doing that, you know. And it's just a suggestion, you know, uh, and, it, and it can help you also figure out where you were, you know, because you can flip back and see like, oh, that's what I needed to do, you know, and you, you write things down, like having this setup to do the live stream, all this was written down so I knew what to do, you know, and like even now, like I, I lost connection, but I didn't freak out because like, okay, I know what happened and I kind of know why, you know, it's like, okay, so last time it happened, I, I wrote down what I needed. I'm like, okay, don't freak out. Don't don't start disconnecting everything. Just <laughs> calm down, you know. Um, so, at least doing that for me, as far as photography and music, it has helped me progress in a, a lot of different levels. Because I'm like, okay, now I know what I'm doing, and you can kind of research back to be like, well, what was I doing that was not working before, and what am I doing now that is working, you know? And that's uh, that also elevates. 
um, you know, anybody starting out with photography, you know, if, if you're using a particular camera, write down what worked, you know, write down what, what, what were you thinking when you were out there doing those photos, you know, what was it that was going through your mind? And then you can assess and be like, and write down like, well, what can I do next time to progress that further? You know, so bringing all these thoughts out of your head and putting them, making them real on a piece of paper uh, helps you move along a lot faster, or at least it, it's what works for me so far. Yeah, I'll, I'll absolutely second that. Uh, I write everything down. Well, and it's funny, I write more stuff down now with the brain injuries because I'll actually forget freaking my name if I don't. But I have whiteboards everywhere and notebooks and absolutely agree with Frank that writing it down uh, not only helps uh, realize it, but definitely uh, helps to be able to go back and say, oh, yeah, that's what I was supposed to do. Oh, my goodness, look who's in the house. Hey, look guys. at that. Oh, Andrew. <laughs> wow. Welcome, Welcome to your show, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> you made it. That's awesome. It looks like it's been in good hands. How are you? Oh, great. Doing great. We talked quite a bit. She's she's doing a great job. This is I awesome. She would. I told her that. I'm trying. <laughs> it's been fun. It's good to see you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So how are you guys? Hat. You got a nice hat there. It's a photographer's hat. <laughs> yeah. I just well, we just uh, signed the papers today. We inherited a house my cousin left to me. Wow. Congratulations. Oh, wow. Well, congratulations. well, sorry about your cousin, but congratulations on, oh, he on the was house. Eight years old. So yeah, it was uh, uh, but he left us everything. He left us two vehicles, he left us the house, the whole kit and caboodle. So I just came back. I just drove eight hundred and fifty kilometers. Oh wow. wow. Yeah. So I well five hundred miles, I guess, something in that area. Wow, wow, that's some distance. Yep. And I only had two days. I went down by train, which took 12 hours. Friday night, got in Saturday morning. Had two days to try and clean up the house and get everything going. Sign the papers today and then drive back with one of the trucks. So, Oh, boy. Yeah. It's yeah, a lot of work, man. It's good to see you guys, though. I was good because I, I felt bad. I wouldn't be able to catch you, so... Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you made it. <laughs> I well, feel so funny. It's your show. I'm glad you made it to your show. <laughs> and I found this hat. And I just couldn't pass it up. So, oh, this is great. Yeah. So, yeah, we covered quite a lot of yeah. ground so far. <laughs> I'm into all that. Old, and he had this great leather jacket. I just was amazing. It was like perfect. Yeah. You look like you're going for an Indiana Jones look. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're gonna get all archy and snobby now. You know, Walking with a big finger all the time. You know. Oh, you're just going to talk about ancient artifacts, and that's it. <laughs> no, we're not going to go there tonight. <laughs> it's a remake of Lost of the Art, or Lost Art, uh, whatever that was back in the day. It, it all ends with the hat, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh boy! I don't know. Maybe Xen will make me wear it tonight afterwards. I don't oh. know. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I know there's a hat rack joke somewhere in there, but I'll leave it yeah. alone. I'm gonna leave it alone. <laughs> Dusty tombs or anything. Don't make me this live stream. <laughs> Everybody's watching. <laughs> well, it's good to see you all. I actually missed the live stream so much. Oh my god, it was killing me. <laughs> I, I, like you know, I wanted to be a part of it so badly, and yeah, so it's so great to see you guys on here. And I caught a little bit. I was listening while I was driving the last 20 minutes or so. Oh, nice. Because okay. data is super expensive in Canada. I can never stress enough. So that really means <laughs> Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but it was really great. You guys are amazing. And uh, you did great, too. Yeah, um, I yeah. have amazing guests and co-hosts. So. <laughs> Sorry for derailing you guys on everything. I love what you were just saying about putting things down on paper because I'm horrible at that. But I yet agree with it's the best way to do it. So. Yeah, it, it's different. helped me out quite a bit doing, you know, progressing with things. And, uh, you know, I wish I would have done this when I was in my 20s because I, I think I would have done a lot more, but I'm, I'm catching up. That's that's the main thing, man. It's it's never too late. You yeah. know, the main thing is you're doing it now. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, and I'm just getting started. <laughs> I mean, it's paying off in droves. So it's it's a definitely a great investment. It's whatever's working. Don't stop it. So you're on a great track. Well, yeah, we're, keep, we're keep it going strong, you know. How it works. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where I'm getting at. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears. <laughs> cool, cool, I, cool. I wanted to ask you, how do you start your day in the morning? Uh, like when you, you say the, that uh, often you have like five, six hours of sleep and that's enough for you. But how do you start your day when you wake up? Like what is your first half an hour? Like is there some kind of routine that you do? Like do you have 
coffee like what it, well, how does it look like well definitely coffee plays a big role <laughs> <laughs> gotta have that that's for sure um usually uh as with anybody else you know you you, you got the alarm clock and you you know you hit it and it, you know it, it still happens to me every once in a while but i've um uh, i heard it somewhere else too where you do a countdown and you're gonna make sure you get up you know so i go five four three two one get your ass up <laughs> and boom i find myself that i just like automatically you know but it does take practice it takes about 30 days of doing it then it becomes automatic and i know it's probably sounding strange to a lot of people it's like are you doing a countdown to wake up oh uh, yeah i do i count down and i get up oh, even yeah. in my days off you know so that I'm, I'm actually forcing myself to make sure hey get up and get things done you know even if it's your day off get up and get things done and you so you find out after 30 days it becomes kind of like a ritual and you start to do it you know but you know like i said i'll be honest it doesn't happen uh, all the time you know i still do be like no i'm going back to sleep <laughs> <laughs> you know especially if i if i'm playing a concert you know and you do a concert and you go on at like you know 11 12 midnight then you're breaking down the equipment, then you're taking it back to the practice, you know, then you're getting to sleep at two o'clock. Then it doesn't work to get up at five o'clock. You're like, no, I'm sleeping in because <laughs> I've been up until two. I just played a concert. I'm like, I need to recover. But say that on a day that you don't have those things and you want to be productive on your day off, whether it's a Saturday or Sunday, for most people, uh, doing a countdown and getting yourself up, you know, it just works for me and that's that's and then of course make the pot of coffee and get that in your system and once that gets going there's no turning back you know it's just, it's, you're on <laughs> if you can bottle that and sell it to every music manager in the world you will make billions of dollars <laughs> <laughs> you found the holy grail <laughs> you'll never have to work again i guarantee you oh well, definitely trying you know that's for sure you know Plus, you know, playing in two bands is it, it, it takes a lot of effort, you know, and um, you know balancing that stuff out, you know. So sometimes, you know, if there's some shows, and I have to, I have to make sure I'm practicing the live sets for both bands and make sure that they're, uh, you know, another important thing to me is to deliver a high energy performance. And um, because I'm in a death metal band, both bands are death metal. Uh, well, you got to go out there and you really got to, you got to move, you got to, you got to show it, you know, you got to bring that energy, you know, and uh, I try to make sure that I'm delivering that because, you know, like all these, all these people paid, you know, good money to see you perform. And uh, I know for myself, when I go watch other performers or I'm taking photos, you know, there's some bands who they're just up there like statues and, you know, they might be playing some awesome stuff, you know, but like, I don't want to. I didn't come here to see statues, you know, I came here to see some hair flying around, I came here to see movement, you know, and the bands that I admire the most are the ones that are bringing out that element, because you're here to entertain all these people, you know, so own it, you know, go out there, get in front of that stage, you know, if you watch my live performances, that's what I do, and I think a lot of people, it might be like, holy, you know, like, wow, that's, you know, that's intense, well, I'm like, well, that's what I want to deliver, you know, so it, that requires a lot of effort, a lot of concentrated effort, and I try to make sure that the people that pay that money are going to get a performance that they're not going to forget, you know, that they're going to go home like, well, what well, that really brought me out of my hard day's work because I can't, you know, I went to a show and I, I had such a good time and you brought out all this energy and now they feel a release, you know, because that's why I do it too. You know, you work hard all day. Now you got to go perform, you know, release all that tension, all that stress, you know, and if I can do that in a live situation and do it for other people, because quite frankly, when I was a kid, when I used to go to concerts, that's what I did. You know, if you went to you went to school all day, you know, your teachers are yelling at you and whatnot. And it's like, oh, this sucks. You know, it's like, but I'm going to a concert, you know. So you go to a concert and you're watching these bands and they make you feel awesome because it's like, wow, you know, and they make you forget about school, you know. So now I'm in a position where it's time for me to do that, you know. So I make sure that whoever's paying that good money to see my band perform, that I'm bringing that energy to the stage. That's amazing. Uh, we didn't touch uh, on one thing that you also do, uh, <laughs> adding to yeah. everything that we already mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> if it's even possible, and we discussed a little bit of that with Neil when we started, uh, is your uh, artist side with 
spray painting. Oh, yes, yes. And shame on me for not keeping up with all that stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I started to slack on, in that department, uh, but I do intend to get back to it. Um, I know uh, I still have a lot of spray painting uh, projects that are kind of like left that I need to get back to it. I also do a, a lot of ink on paper. And I actually, I was doing fairly well, actually, on Facebook when I started doing uh, Facebook videos of just doing my artwork. And I would show the process and even on a, on a time lapse, um, I started to gain a lot of momentum. And uh, what ended up happening was that when Facebook changed over, when they wanted people to give the real names, mm. they deleted my account. <laughs> Oh. oh no! And and, I, and that was a that was a while back, and I actually got my account back, you know. But it took away a lot of the buildup that I had, and uh, I felt I let it knock I let it knock me down, which I shouldn't have. I should have just kept going and found other mediums, but I stopped, unfortunately. Uh, but you can still yeah, those are those are, if you see that's from back in uh, 2010. I was really like devolved into the spray painting thing, you know, because you can go to do these space paintings of the moon, the sun, and all that. And I really like, I found like a little niche in doing that. I was like, I really enjoy doing this. And, um, but also there was, was also finding the time and, um, you know, whether you wanted to allocate that time to photography or music or art, it's like, okay, where are you going to do it? You know, so I kind of left that, unfortunately, uh, back there, but it's not gone. It's just something that it's laying dormant, but it will come back. So I plan on getting back to it very, very soon. Very, those those pieces are so impressive. I, I was I was just blown away by uh, just how amazing they are, and then to know that it that you did it with spray paint, I, I couldn't wrap my little brain around how that whole thing came together to look so freaking awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I I did it uh, by watching others on uh, on YouTube. Uh, there was a spray painting uh, site that I was following for quite a while, so I learned a lot from from them. So it's not like something that I made up. It was something that I was following along. And actually, uh, I got pretty far as far as like I was even doing reverse spray painting. And I actually have a video where I I do it. Uh, so basically, what you do is you take a frame and you take the glass and you're doing a reverse type of spray painting where so you're not putting it on paper you're putting it on glass uh it's kind of difficult to explain but you're creating a scene in reverse mm. so you spray painting it and, and uh, you cover up the objects say like the moon or the trees or whatever you're, you're drawing you cover them up and then you're layering the painting in reverse wow and i know it sounds kind of weird but oh, when it dries weird. up and then you lift up the painting it's uh you know you, you have you have a you know something to look at which is a uh, really cool so i got it i got it pretty far i think if you uh search out artem mortifica reverse spray painting you'll probably be able to see it i look weird because i'm wearing a mask because it's, it's a lot of fumes right I'm a mask and at that time I, I wasn't good at speaking in front of the camera so there's no talking at all it's just me like showing like these look at the frame look at the spray paint you know like i wasn't saying anything at all and i just had music playing in the background so i know it probably seemed weird to a lot of people because i look like a some kind of a clinical surgeon or something <laughs> like what's he gonna do <laughs> you put so the same raw that's energy as in death metal you put it into all your work and it is a lot of raw energy and that's what comes through in your art Oh, thanks. Thanks. I, I appreciate it. Mind as much as the music or the, the art or anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I, I used it uh, before. Uh, it's like uh, focus intent is what I uh, call it. And, yep. and so it's, it, you, know, you basically bring all the powers of your mind into one thing and you focus it, you know, and you, you, you can do a lot, you know, and, uh, and any, anyone can do it really. It's just, you have to train your mind. You know, our, our minds have, such vast potential that if we actually put ourselves in tune with our minds we realize that we can accomplish a lot yeah. you know and i can say that from testing that out you know i wouldn't believe it if i didn't try it you know and so it's a matter of like focus in on what you want to do you know so on, another thing that i have that i want to do and this is going to sound strange but i want to learn a different language i want to I, I know how to speak spanish and english I would like to uh, speak French. I know oh, that's nice. Strange, but I want to challenge myself 
to focus my mind on that. I know it's strange. I, I put a lot of stuff on myself. <laughs> Sometimes I look at myself like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, you're going to have to you know, buy stock and coffee because you, you're doing a lot. <laughs> you're going to do that count out in the morning and then go, why, why am I giving myself something else to do? <laughs> I got three minutes. In the yeah, right. yeah, I've got 15 spare minutes. <laughs> and that's I, at me for a while. So, yeah. That's great. I see intense metal, death metal inspired knitting in your future. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever works, right? You know, <laughs> right. wherever there's an outlet, you've got a hold on it. So, yeah, definitely. I, I do, I do got something to show you guys. It might, might be, might be interesting. Uh, as, as far as uh, photography and filming, my, my next thing that I that I'm working on, and I'll show you right now. Wow! Oh, I'm I've been very interested in uh, um, cinematic stuff, and uh, last year I picked up uh, a, a, a lens. This is a projection lens, and this is my next thing that I want to try doing. I'm teaching myself. This is uh, called a cinescope. I don't know if you can see it or not. Wow. Yeah, this is a cinescope lens. It used to be used in uh, old projection for theaters, yeah. for movie projectors and theaters. Um, and they sell these. Uh, this is around 300 bucks. All right, so what this does is give you that widescreen look. You know how you see in, like, in, in big films, you have that widescreen look with the flares. Yeah. This, is, this is the lens that will do it for you. Wow. But there's a little bit more that's involved with it. So basically, you are you have to adapt your camera to the lens and there's no threats. So in order to, to use this lens to get you that cinematic look, you have to put it on the rig. And this is the rig right here. Uh, you can see that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So this is the rig for it, you know, and then it, it, it holds the DSLR, which I'm going to be using the Panasonic. And then the, the lens, there's a lens collar on here, and it'll hold that so you can focus. So that's my next project that I'm going to be doing filming cinematic style with this, this particular lens and, uh, and that's this cool. rig right here. Wow, so, this is amazing. I, I, I'm excited. Yeah, well, we're excited for you and yeah. for us to be able to see that. Yeah, no, no one's seen that yet, so you guys are the first to check that out. Oh, thank you for sharing with us. This is amazing. It really sounds like whatever you're taking on, you're really like researching beforehand, really putting your time into learning everything you can before you actually put your hands doing it. And then you still learn as you go. Right. So that's been a year in the making, you know, and I haven't even wow. touched on it yet. You know, as I was sitting there, like it's like this baby that I'm nursing. <laughs> <laughs> I got some other ones. I have a little series called Using Old Digital Cameras, and I'm in love with old Kodak photos. So if you know, like Life Magazine and all these from like the 70s, the Kodak look yeah. is a very, uh, it speaks to my soul in pictures. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the colors or not. So I, I actually got like these old like Kodak, little point and shoot Kodak cameras. Oh, nice. That I want to use. And I, I actually bought them pretty cheap, you know. So one of you, they, they actually do video as well too. So I got I got this one, but I I, I got a lens that I'm gonna adapt. And uh, they used to use these on old Kodaks from the 1930s, the Retina. This is a uh, Schneider Schneider Krusniak uh, lens. Wow. It's for the um, Retina Cinar camera, and you can adapt these to your uh, Sony camera. So you use uh, you use this adapter right here. So you adapt I this. Talk more with you about it. I, I use Sony A6000. Uh, so oh, yeah, so it's very similar. Your... <laughs> yes, it's very similar to the 63, 6300. Yeah. So the combination of this old lens here from the 1930s, the Schneider, and this camera, I'm just I'm anxious to use it. But I don't want to I don't want to take it on before I finish my other projects, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm excited to do it because I I try to achieve that look in my photographs the color whether it's in black and white or not um if anything that i'm focused in on is trying to go for that old look you know not so much desaturated look but more or less like reaching when i used to as a kid look look through those life magazines and national geographic you know those that look 
is what I'm aiming for when I do my photography. That's amazing. Um, I, I think I first went into photography liking or my mom got a camera sent from uh, States and back then they were behind the iron wall, you know, in USSR. And somebody sent her or brought her from a rare trip to States an old Kodak. Oh, wow. And that's what she was taking pictures till probably late 90s. Uh, wow. film, like a film, you know, with a film in it. And, and I remember I was so awed by it. And I, by the end, it was still, you know, st with the tape around it and everything. Still was working condition, but yeah. <laughs> with tape all over it. But the picture was coming out amazing, you know. And, and, and I think that was the first kind of like jolt into, into more enjoying the visual and the photos and all that, you know, looking through your eyes differently than just, exactly. you know. Yeah. I want to. I want to get. I want to get into uh, taking film again. You know, but the only thing that's stopping me is the whole process. You know, I don't. I don't have a way to process the film, the strips. You know, I know there's a camera store in Chicago that I can go to that they still do that. You know, uh, but it, it's it's a lot of effort. You know, but uh, I'm I'm interested in backtracking and going back and using like old style DSLRs and doing doing the film without LCD or anything like that, without the automatic yeah. focus. You know, just going like really old school. I've seen other other photographers doing it and I, I love the work that comes out of it, you know, because it's not, I don't know how to say it, it's, it's not digital, you know, it's a, it's a print, you know, exactly. so you're getting a whole different, I, I, it's, it's really weird. I, I, I don't know if you can relate, like listening to analog tape and then listening to a CD. Oh yes, definitely. There's a certain, there's a certain difference with analog as opposed to digital and then in film as well, you know can actually send the film uh, there are lots of and i know in states that there are more of them than in canada where you can uh, send it by mail and okay of bringing it in so if you're interested into doing that there are other options than just bringing it to, into okay cool program. yeah definitely definitely um yeah that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I I enjoy I try to to breach that gap, you know. Um, and actually, I, I have like if, if you guys use Lightroom for your processing for your photos or no? Uh, yes, I use both Lightroom and Photoshop um, in conjunction for the same photo, so to say, for different reasons. Okay, so if you're using Lightroom, uh, what I did is I, I downloaded uh, uh and Andrew Ruder does a Kodak black and white profile, which is I use, if you see my black and white photos, a lot of it I'm using his presets on it. Oh, and, uh, those wow. are available. I think I, I've only paid like ten dollars just to download them, and then you can add them to your Lightroom presets, and it makes things a lot easier. Uh, so you and also uh, Gavin Gao, if you research him, he does Kodak Kodachrome. So he actually took the Kodak, Kodak sheets that they used to process film with. He actually got them, and he was able to. I don't know how he did it. I guess it's very technical, but he was able to create profiles from the old Kodak sheets is how they processed their film, the color film in black and white. And he transposed that into making it a preset on Lightroom. And he's got that available so you can download those presets. And that's a lot of what I'm using. And it just makes life easier. So you can just add those presets to your raw picture files and you can have a similar look and then you can just tweak it to the way you need it to be for your photographs. Wow. Yeah, because you're black and white, and I love black and white, and I'm sharing now your Instagram feed. Uh, awesome. Uh, the black and white uh, images is just some yeah. different, completely space in my heart <laughs> for mm. photography. It's it's it just so, you know, I, I and I don't remember which photographer was it that I was uh, watching or reading about that was saying that uh, if you don't if the if the color is not important, you don't need it. If the color doesn't enhance anything or doesn't add to the story, you don't really need it. Make the picture black and white. Because, I, and I agree, it enhances the story. You know, sometimes the color takes away from the story. Right, and, and you know, we're at this point now that we're like, you know, we can experiment with that. You know, we can like, we can actually look at it like back and forth and see if that color takes away or, or if it adds, you know, um, and a lot of the time, if you look at it in black and white, it, it brings a whole different element. And sometimes it even brings more attention to the subject that you're trying to bring attention to in your photographs. Um, you know, I know, I know some people are strictly black and white and then some people are strictly color, you know, and, but I, I like both actually, you know, um, the color not being so dominant 
also, you know, you can tone it down a little bit, you know, and that's why I, I like to use those presets because not only can you put those presets on your photos, but then you can go back and then tweak it to your own taste. So a lot of the final uh, publishings that you see on my Instagram there, I've added the preset and then I've gone back and then I tweaked it to uh, the way I, I see it visually on, on my monitor to be like, okay, now, you know, kind of try to give it my own so that I'm not just slapping something on there. Yeah. So that I'm actually adding a little bit of what my eye sees to the to the final product. You should uh, do a, a workflow video. I would love to see how how you like from A to Z. How do you do your workflow? Editing? That's actually a very good idea. <laughs> That's cool. I, I I think I I should do that. Actually, I did a I did a tutorial on the. I don't know if Andrew saw it or not. I was I was telling your wife that when I do my vlogging, because uh, Neo and her were talking about how weird it looks when I do my my walking, my little vlogging. I'm using this little camera right here. It's an e, e 4K action camera. And so then if you're if you're vlogging, it doesn't look weird. It just looks weird if like if you're talking to your hand, you know. So you're like, yeah. he's just talking to his hand, so it's okay. <laughs> you know, he's not that crazy. <laughs> talking with a big camera. So what I did is I actually did a little tutorial on how to how to get a good picture from the video file from this camera. And it's on my channel. You guys can look it up. It's how to how to color correct E action camera flat video. That's amazing. Camera. I I just love the size of it. That's so cool. Yeah, Lee, are you screaming your uh, uh, word there, the, the mm -hmm. cursing word that I can't pronounce? Uh, <laughs> how <laughs> photography stuff? <laughs> no, I, I, it's great. I mean, it's it's fun because I, I learned a lot. It was interesting because I was uh, in the garage and I found my old Canon 35 millimeter. It was like oh, nice. one of the little inexpensive, I think one of the Rebel cameras. And I was just thinking about going on vacation and taking like, 10 rolls of film and taking all the pictures and then coming back and having them developed and spending hundreds of, of dollars to get, I don't know, maybe six good pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird to think like, you know, that there was a time when you couldn't just look at the camera and see the picture you took. So I had no idea what I took pictures of. I'm like, Oh, right. so. Well, that was the same as he was talking well, about old digital cameras. And I'm like, we're at the point now where we have retro digital cameras. Like, I yep. My that, that's on. amazing. Yeah. Right, right, right. In 2000, 2004, I was shooting ads for uh, Marshall and that outside using a four megapixel camera. Wow. I was that big and making try, and I still had to adjust them enough and size them and, and recover enough to get them to a full page ad. And that's wow. not that long ago. And that was a good camera. I mean, that cost a couple of grand at the time. You know, everybody warned you before you took it out. They wanted, at one point, they almost wanted to do a sign in sheet for it. You know? <laughs> Which is weird because it was only me and one other guy using it. But it's, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> when I got hired there in 2001, their pride and joy was a plasma television. And yes, Canada's more expensive than the States. They wow. had a plasma television, thirty inches, and it cost thirty grand that time. Wow! Oh, wow! And that yeah. room was under lock and key. And if anybody, the guys came in from Japan, they all wanted they had to show them or some. You know, that was it's amazing in just such a short time. Wow! Also jumped so over the. We've gone through four generations. It seems like just since two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. You know, I actually have friends who uh, their kids. You know, that they, they they just know how to use you know, digital camera or cell phone, whatever, just almost like they know how to use it. You know, they'll take me like, I know how to use this. You know? <laughs> They're better than wow. any of us with it. <laughs> you know, like we have three kids. We said that the other night, we have a 20 year old, 11 and seven. And each one of them have grown up in a different generation. Wow. Just yeah. I, I know when I tell people that I'm, I'm live streaming is like, you know, the kids are, Oh, we do it all the time. Yeah. We do it when we're playing our games. Yeah. You know? Okay. <laughs> Thanks like for making me feel old. <laughs> I would go give anything as much as I hated school. I would give anything to go back and do one school project now with all the information, all the media's available. Just all right. Be like, <laughs> just to freak everybody out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to do like a Bill and Ted's thing, I guess. You know? Right, right. That would be great.
like instead of some old, I, I was seeing that last night. I was moving these encyclopedias that were in the house, and I literally opened them up. And my father doesn't like to get rid of anything. He's like, "Oh, those are worth money." I'm like, "Dad, do you realize in these things they still call it the USSR?" Wow, <laughs> <laughs> they're not worth. They're not unless you need something to shimmy up a couch that's crooked. Then yeah, uh, I got a question. Have you guys ever uh, done any photography on a Hasselblad camera? No. Um, me neither. I would love to. I would love to. I, I, the images from Hasselblad, and actually, I've seen a, a lens that can be adapted to the Sony A6300. Really? I've, been wanting to, I've been wanting to get my hands on one. It's a Hasselblad lens that can wow. be adapted. But uh, I only saw it once on eBay, and then it disappeared. And I haven't <laughs> been able to find it ever since. I love using old lenses. Actually, I got another one for you, and actually, maybe you might recognize it because it's from Russia. And I love it too because it gives it gives it a weird a weird bokeh effect. This is uh, Helios from Cenit, forty four millimeter. Yes. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's made in Russia. It's got an adapter, so I take the adapter off. It's got a screw on adapter. It's a for for the forty four micro four thirds camera. Wow. Mhm. Mm nice. How many yeah. lenses do you own all together? Oh boy. <laughs> uh, that's a tough one. Um, it's got to be uh, o over 15. Wow. Maybe more. I have Takina. I have Helios. I have, oh boy. Uh, let's try to think. I, I, have them, I have them all laid out, but I, I can't. They're, they're all beyond where the, all my lighting is. Um, I, I, have, I, I have a lot of vintage lenses. I also have uh, CCTV camera lenses little tiny ones mm. i have little telescope lenses oh that my are God. really strange but they can be adapted to the sony a6300 so i'm like hey why not <laughs> you know why not try it out you know and they look really weird but it's like well what can i do with this you know what i mean i haven't i haven't uh, posted anything up yet but i i need to experiment some more so yeah i'm, I'm a lover of vintage lenses that's where that uh the, the earlier i was showing you that other lens the the cinescope you know, I came across that. I'm like, I want that thing. You know, because that's just, you know. I think we'll have to have you back uh, just talking about photography yeah. because I'm all ears and and I know. Hey, <laughs> Joe wrote Artem Orvin. I just left. I uh, Artem Orvin, I left that at a bus stop in Russia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this lens is awesome. But over there, he's called Das Joe. Da Joe. <laughs> Oh man! Well, yeah. In the twenties, thirties, forties, were made in Latvia. The little, little tiny ones. Okay. Uh, that you, that you see in all the spy movies and uh, you know, zero uh, zero seven. Their agent. How is how? Double oh seven. <laughs> so all those little uh, spy cameras, they were actually made in in Latvia. Like okay. the, the factory was there. It's only closed at the end of nineties uh, there. Yeah. Why are you looking at me like I'm no, it's three a good heads? Story. My God. <laughs> you could buy the rubber boot factory or it looks like <laughs> actually oh. the building is a train factory. They made trains. I go on road trips with Welcome these guys. Back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 you, know, you know what was cool? You know, you're talking about uh, like lenses and cameras. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard of the movie Interstellar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't watched it though. Okay, so that that movie was filmed on an IMAX camera, and that IMAX camera takes 72 millimeter film. Oh, and, yeah. And I, if you search it out, if you search out uh, Interstellar and the making of, you see how that movie was filmed with this giant IMAX camera. And actually, when they premiere that movie, when I went to see it in IMAX, IMAX had to bring back the old projectors to be able to fit that film inside the projectors to show it in its true form. In wow. Yeah. wow. And when they were directing that, they're carrying these giant cameras and they're filming <laughs> with it you know so it's really crazy it's just a, an interesting thing is I'm, oh, I'm kind of freaky about lenses and cameras that's the pride that is the pride of montreal imax it was invented here oh wow yeah oh, see, i didn't know that another big claim to fame the montreal did a lot in the time for cinema uh multiplex theaters was invented here a lot of film uh stuff like that was done here first it seemed to be kind of their niche 
not That's making awesome. movies, but <laughs> well, animation now. There are lots of done is done here. Oh yeah, actually. lots of it's done now. But up until the two thousands, they had a budget of about fifty dollars to make a TV show, so <laughs> it wasn't much to export. <laughs> they mostly made right. it paused here somewhere. That was their <laughs> not so, the best viewing you'll ever watch. <laughs> <laughs> so Andrew, what what do you guys are preferred cameras nowadays to go uh, doing photography with? Well, I only use one. I, she does more photography. I uh, for oh. video. I'm using the DJI Osmo for everything. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, it's just the camera that works best for what I do. Um, it's versatile. Uh, I like the steady cam at a decent price. Yeah, I noticed that in the, some of the you're filming with the trains and stuff. The stability is amazing because you're doing those panning motions, and I don't notice any weird jiggles or anything like that. So that's awesome. Z axis I bought for like a I forget now maybe two hundred bucks and for uh, extra stabilization especially for walking and that and that was worth its weight in gold. Yeah, but I don't totally. have the most steady hand to begin with, but it really does compensate and you don't have to do the duck walk either. <laughs> it's stable for about twelve hundred bucks it cost me with extra batteries and everything. Wow, but it's not a fast camera because it's literally the camera off the Inspire drone mounted on a stick. Uh, I see. Your phone I see. to control it. Or you can yeah, start yeah. it, but you got no viewfinder or anything. Gotcha. Yeah, that's kind of like that. The e camera that I use is also there's. I mean, there is a, a screen in the back that you can use, uh, but I love the stabilization on it. I mean, it's not the best, you know, but it's a lot better because I was using my DSLR before, and it's just, you know, I was using Canon, Canon T3i to do my walking with, and it was just just moving around too much for me. Uh, so when I switched to the action camera. It changed everything a lot, you know, and you know, some people have, have given me feedback on it. You know, it's like they're like, oh, you know, we like watching your videos, but you're, you know, it's a lot of jitter. It's giving me a headache. <laughs> you know, So I'm like, what do I do to fix this? You know, so now that I'm using the E camera it is a lot better, you know, because of the stabilization, as you were saying. I'm really anal about that's one thing if I ever had about was jittery. That's one thing I'm too because I can't edit it. I get too angry and then I start cutting and cutting and cutting and I end up taking the 30 second clip. And I have two, three second pieces out of it. So it did let me keep a lot more of my footage than I used to. But when you're filming, you can really get that drone shot. I always like shooting about waist height. Yeah. You can flashlight mode and hold it this way. That's how I can get that kind of like lift off from like behind bushes to catch lakes and stuff. Wow. Do you but guys... It... Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, but when people see you, it looks like you're doing Tai Chi. <laughs> <laughs> you're coming kind of hiding with a little camera. This one, you're open, the open for everybody. Uh, and it's I was very gonna, hard to get people on streets because it's a very unusual looking camera. Uh -huh. So it's harder to get that natural look of people on the street because it's always kind of eye catching. So that I do have to shoot a lot and cut just to get people like moving that didn't notice it at the time and stuff. Got you. So what well, are you guys using for uh, when you do your videos outside of? Oh, uh, us, uh, we're using a uh, GoPro Hero 5 and an external mic. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, Annalise had a friend who uh, worked at GoPro, so we were able to get it at a, at a pretty good deal. So, um, yeah, it, it, we're, it, we had all that stuff, so we didn't want to buy any more. Uh, we wanted to see how the channel would go first. Yeah. Uh, but it works so well because they're so small, you know, like you were saying, Frank, they're so small. And light and the stabilization is so good on them that there's there's really no need for for much more. Yeah, that's true. I agree with that. Uh, what I was going to ask about uh, using drones and stuff, I don't know how you guys are in your states, but like here in the city, if I wanted to use a drone, I have to file um, for permission. You have to get a permit. Do you guys have to do that where you guys are at too, or do you know anything about that? Canada, you don't fly them. In Canada, you have to be uh, at least nine mile miles, nine kilometers, nine right? kilometers from any place where you can fly off anything. So that oh, includes okay. any field, any roof, or anything that you can fly off. You can you can't fly over any uh, creature. Yeah, the uh, animals. That, they don't even say what, just animals. Yeah, it just says <laughs> animals. So basically, if there's a squirrel on the ground and you're flying over, that's illegal. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> <so> <laughs> Hard to do it. Like for example, bottle caps I know is doing real estate and some weddings in BC, but Quebec uh, is very bad on it. Like the biggest rate of, of uh, issuing fines for these laws is in Quebec. I think it's only, I think it's the only actually province in Canada that have issued any fines. But like it's impossible. In order to fly it in a wedding, we have to have two pilots, a license, a permit, insurance. Like it's it's. Oh crazy. wow. 
yeah it is crazy yeah that is crazy so yeah it's not much different than what we have here you know that's what keeps me from doing it i, I love those aerial shots you know but i don't want to go through all the through all the hassle of, you know especially here because there's so many high rises exactly especially in the city for sure yeah exactly. it, it, it's like a big thing so it's like yeah i mean i'm doing fine with what i got and i got i already got a lot on my plate anyway so <laughs> oh my God. what am i gonna do with a drone now <laughs> exactly well, what is in your future uh besides learning more and more and more <laughs> what what is what's in, what is the next thing with the music was uh being an artist, being a photographer. I know uh, there is a Chicago Domination Fest uh, in the music scene coming up on July 26th, is that right? Yeah, so that's the next big thing. Uh, I'm performing and I'm covering it as well. So I'm doing two things. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, so, so yeah, so that's three days, three days of just absolute brutal death metal music. Uh, it's happening at a place called Dirty Nellies in Palatine, Illinois. Uh, it's a huge place and uh, the guy who sets up the promoter the main guy miguel uh he's also my bandmate in the asphyxiator so he's the one that puts it on and then i go out there and i make sure i cover all the bands uh basically i get i get one song from each band live performance and i also do uh, photography for all the bands wow for, for all three days so yeah. Do the do the bands ask you or tell you which song they'd like you to do, or do you pick which song you want uh, to get of theirs? Usually, I ask. Okay. Uh, to see what, you know which one they have a better performance. Uh, sometimes you know they'll say, "Well, just do wh whichever you want." You know, it's up to you. Uh, so, if I ask, you know, they'll usually tell me which one will be the best performance and whatnot. You know, uh, but you know, like it, it's kind of strange because you know I know a lot of these guys, so it's almost like. You're asking your friends, you know, mm -hmm. so the, the whole uh, business connection is almost like blurred because I know some of them. And it's almost like, hey, blah, blah, blah. You know? So, yeah, I just filmed this this one here and it's, it's real casual, you know, um, what I, I, I want to step up my game, but I don't know if I can get away with it. I want to live stream <laughs> all three days. That would be I, cool. I don't know <laughs> how to do it. Technically, I've been trying to wrap my head around how to be able to do it. I haven't figured it out yet, but first uh, person shooting strap it on the chest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I want to do it where I can bring like this kind of quality to the live stream. I don't want to just have like, cause I know some of my friends do the live streaming from Facebook and they do it on their cell phones and the quality is, you know, the image looks good, but the sound is horrible mm -hmm. because the cell phone mics are not meant to pick up loud sound, you know, no, definitely not. For yeah, sure. so I got that. So that's a three-day festival, and then we're I'm doing a, a live interview with. Uh, it's actually like a I, I want to say it's like a podcast almost called the Metal Metal Experience with my other band Blood of the Wolf. We're doing that in October, and we're also playing Wisconsin. We're doing a, a CD release party for our friends' band in Wisconsin with Blood of the Wolf. So I got those three three things going on, and in between will be you know other events that are. That are actually coming up that i you know i might be asked to cover as well too so but i don't know what those are yet at the moment and as far as the photography i you know i've shown you what i got planned as far as the lenses and different looks uh, and actually i have a few more episodes in that series that are already uploaded and they're just oh, scheduled they're yeah they're scheduled to come up very soon uh, i think it's only it's up to day 10 right now wow and uh, so that, oh, that's another tip. And I don't know if you guys know or do not know. If you do, that's great. Uh, there's a, a time saver, which I didn't know about until recently, that if you film and you do a schedule upload, for example, like some of these series, I uploaded a lot of those episodes all in one uh, amount of time. And then I schedule them. I spread them out evenly throughout the week on certain days. So then they're coming up by themselves and I can oh. schedule them to come up. So if you do your analytical for your, uh, for when your audience is, you know, most active on, on your YouTube channel, you can use your analytics and pinpoint the time frame when you're going to have the most views and schedule your video. So I can be at work and then my video will start playing scheduled at noon, even though I'm at work. 
which I didn't know that before, you know, before I was just like, oh, now I have to wait till I have the day off and wait to upload. And then blah, blah, blah. now with the schedule, now I can even advertise. I can say like a week in advance, hey, guys, my episode blah, blah, blah is coming up and I can actually take the photos and start promoting them on Instagram and be like, hey, this is coming up. This is coming up, you know, and it gains more traction because you're giving out one photo, two photos here and there. So then by the time the video comes, they were, you know, you already had the opportunity to tell people a week in advance that it's coming. Mm -hmm. And that saves a lot of time. That's a great tip. That's a very good tip. I find for social media, I, it saves a lot of time. I use Buffer for um, not all of them, but for lots of planning of social media for the week. And it definitely takes away wasted time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you guys use anything? I'm, I'm sure you use for all, uh, Neil, for all of your four or five social media channels. <laughs> you, you know, it's it's funny. We don't. We don't do. Uh, but I'm starting to change my my tune on this. But we don't use any any sort of auto um, auto response or auto post feature. And for the longest time, um, I was uh, you know my whole thought was because it's supposed to be somewhat social. I always felt. Uh, especially like with the auto DMs, like when you sign up for somebody's channel or, or uh, you follow them on Twitter and then you get the auto. I'm like, it's supposed to be, I mean, if I understand if you're huge and you're so huge that you don't have the time to respond to everybody, then just don't respond. And then for the auto tweets in the podcast world, a lot of people sign up, set up like, you know, especially when the podcast goes out or every day, you know, it'll be like, hey, it's Tuesday, check out my podcast. But I always felt again, I'm like, well, it's it's supposed to be somewhat social and somewhat interactive. So I was I was very much like, no, I don't want to. I mean, it's OK if other people want to. I don't want to. But now that we have the podcast and the YouTube channel and the other podcast and Annalise does the the Napa site and then we have all this stuff that it's almost like we're going to have to start to use something just for like the release of this of the videos and the podcasts just just to help me out because I spend I'm spending way too much time having to put these freaking things on Twitter uh, for just the basic not the actual interaction but just the oh it's getting released today or tomorrow so I think I'm going to start using something just for that but still the actual interaction of commenting on people's things or promoting it a little more will be still on the on the social personal side and that's why exactly why I started to use Buffer. We used it a little bit when I was uh, when we were doing your events Iceland, just because it got a little bit too much um, mm -hmm. crazy into posting. And I didn't for the longest time. And I just started it. I think a couple of weeks ago again, exactly for this reason because I want to interact more. I want to spend less time actually writing out the tweet, you know, and, and, and posting and reposting things or creating the poster and then figuring out the time when to put it on because oftentimes like buffer figures out the time and you can put or you can put your own analytics in for the best times when to put it out and then I can put stuff in between which I often do as well, but at least it's there, right? So I, I, I have more time uh, answering things, you know, or commenting on other people's tweets, for example, or Facebook or Instagram, than making my own, which was the main reason why I started using it again, because otherwise it just takes so much time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I realized that, oh, I'm sorry, Frank, go ahead. I was going to say, how, how are you guys on using different languages and, and captions on your videos? Have you we, guys... we haven't uh, explored that yet, although it's been brought up to me uh, a few times. Uh, but we haven't actually uh, delved into that yet. But I, I think it's a good idea. Okay, so I st what I started doing uh, uh, last year, and I'm 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 still getting better. And it, and it, it takes a little bit of effort, uh, but it's actually has gained uh, quite a quite a bit of a different audience. Is to create uh, captions in different languages, and I also signed up for the Russian uh, website equivalent of Facebook called VK. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys ever heard of VK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I do is if I if I'm posting a video on VK, I make captions that that, that are in Russian for my how-to videos on how to use camera and lenses. I'll make captions in Russian and even add a description that translates to Russian. So when somebody in Russia is on YouTube, the description, title, and everything comes up in Russian so they can understand what it's about. How you know? do you do that? Do you hire somebody to translate it for you, or like how how do you make it happen? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Chinese secret. <laughs> all right. So in looking into all this, 
I see people pay a lot of money to outsource it to a place that does it for you, you know, and sometimes they charge you a dollar or for whatever amount of sentences or words you use. Okay, so what I what I do is, it, and you know, this is far easier and it's free. Once I created my description and title all in English, I take it and I copy and I go to Google Translator, right? And then you pick the language that you want to translate it to. So then now that's going to take it and create the language that you're looking for. And now you take and copy and paste that language, you go back to your video. And in your video, you have an option when you go into your edit mode to go into translation. So in translation, you pick, for example, Russian. So I translated my description and everything on Google Translator. I got my Russian stuff already copy and paste it. And then I input it into the description under translations. And then you just save it. And then when you go back, and if you see so you, you, you if you shut off your um so you're not signed in and you check back on say Google and you go to YouTube and uh, you search it out in Russian, your video should come up with a description in Russian and the title in Russian so people in Russia or wherever you decided to do that translation. So for one of my videos that I do for one of my lenses, I translate it into five different languages, Japanese, Brazilian, uh, you know, different types of Spanish and even Indonesian. Oh, wow. So when all those people go and look at that video, they'll, they'll get captions and they'll get the description all in their own language. Mm -hmm. That's wow. really cool. So it's a little bit of work, you know, but it's free. <laughs> yeah. And you don't have to outsource it and pay somebody for it, you know. Because I was like, I know Russian. It's my like second language. Uh, English is my third. But I I know Russian. But I always was weird even doing it myself because I wasn't really sure if I'm you know I, I don't talk it anymore. So I wasn't sure if I'm good enough even to translate it. But I think I will try this now. <laughs> yeah, even if you get it in the ballpark, you know, yeah. get in the ballpark area, at least. You know, somebody out there will be like, oh, at least I can watch the captions and get a gist of what you're speaking about, you know, and uh, the percentage, you know, it's not great, but it, you know, checking my analyticals for as far as if you go on analyticals and you check your transcription viewership, for me, since I started doing that, it has grown by 30 oh, percent. I know it's, oh, not that's a, great. It's, it's not a lot, but, you well, know, I, it's better you know. than zero. <laughs> yeah, no, that's huge. Great idea. By the way, there was a tip from uh, Doodles uh, for using a concert uh, mic. Uh, um, Doodles is using, where is Doodle? Doodle is using professional cardioid condenser microphone that they bought on Amazon. For the for, concert. For live, live concert recording? Yeah. Well, for, uh, what kind of mic to use? Uh, well, uh, you were talking about using the cell phone and uh, the sound quality, so I guess they are adding the uh, cardioid condenser microphone. To oh, phone. for the cell phones, yes, I've seen yeah. those, and those that's great. That that works perfectly too, because you're yeah, you're just you're adding. Um, it's got a, a, a mini stereo input into your phone, okay. and then and then the microphone becomes uh, your external microphone for your cell phone. Okay. So, so it's 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 coming up. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, that that's a that's a great option to have for if you're using your cell phone. I mean, don't get me wrong. Cell phones are the quality of the picture is becoming awesome, and they're they're now catching up to the the microphone part of it. So it can you know you get get good sound. You know. Definitely. Well, uh, so what are we looking forward to your next video? What is scheduled? Uh, your six uh, six part series now. Yeah, the sixth one coming up. Yes, yeah, so that's be on Thursday at noon. Thursday at noon, perfect. Very day, cool. day number six. Yeah, and uh, I'm trying to think where where was I? Because I, I go all over Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Chicago. It's just there's so much going on, you know, and so many spontaneous things. All kinds of walks of life are around here, and so you never know what you're gonna find. Um, I I know the last one I was at Navy Pier. I'm trying to remember where was I for the sixth. Oh, I was on Michigan Avenue for the sixth. So Michigan Avenue, you can't go wrong because it's a high traffic area. So be on the lookout for that number six 
and it's short. It's not going to be like 10 minutes or nothing. It's like four or five minutes, you know, so it's watchable. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, well, is there anything that you wanted to add before we le leave you go this time? And we'll definitely need to have you back talking about photography. <laughs> okay, Pusa Studios, Neil, you guys are awesome. My deepest gratitude. Thank you for having me on. All the people on the live chat, I love you guys. Thanks so much for taking a time out of your day to join us and to chat with us and to have some fun. I look forward to all your comments and I am an ongoing supporter for everyone who's an ongoing supporter to me. So as long as we keep the community up and we follow each other and we help each other out, we will reach different levels, higher plateaus for sure. Perfect. Thank you so much for coming over again to our live stream and uh, we'll definitely, we'll have to have you back again. So much to talk awesome. about. Awesome. I, I would love to come back. <laughs> yeah thanks Ray. it was a blast i was uh it's funny because i know I, I reached out to you and said that i i was hoping we would get a chance to chat and so it, it was so cool that this all fell into place and uh really really enjoyed it and uh just such a such a great person and i, I learned a lot tonight so thank you same here thanks guys yeah, thank you bye have a great night okay now i just have you on <laughs> uh oh, trouble. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I just wanted to uh, have uh, for you uh, the opportunity to uh, talk a little bit what you are having in your future plans. What's your next next podcast is about, or next video? Uh, well, I also want to say uh, thank you to you and Andrew for uh, letting me uh, sit in tonight, and thanks for everybody who showed up tonight in the chat. It was a great time. I uh, very much appreciate it. it. I just, I love hanging out with you guys and I'm glad we had the opportunity to hang out and talk with, uh, talk with Frank. He's such a, a neat person and, and, and so much, so much life and so much dedication. It was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, as far as, uh, us, we have, a. We'll have a, let's see, I think we're doing the, the reasons are several tomorrow night. And then we have another video coming out on Thursday and then we'll have our podcast, uh, the other podcast on Saturday. So just the, same old stuff that we enjoy doing just we'll, we'll we're somewhere we're everywhere you'll see you'll see my big head on some video at some point <laughs> <laughs> well we're definitely looking forward to it. Uh, i i love you guys video and the podcast is a regular thing now and since i discovered that i can listen to it on my cast box now i <laughs> yeah uh, it's so awesome so thank you again for agreeing to to be my co-host tonight definitely made the things easier and less stressful <laughs> oh for sure anytime anytime you're awesome so this is a lot of fun thank you and say uh hi to annalise and hopefully next time see her as well and we'll do bye 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 take care well thank you guys uh for sticking uh around with us tonight um this was uh, Art Morbid, uh, our guest tonight. I, I was trying to drop uh, as many links as possible tonight. Uh, definitely check it out. Uh, his Instagram, his uh, YouTube, uh, his Twitter, amazing stuff. Lots of music, a lot of amazing photography. If you're somebody who is into that, definitely got to look into his uh, uh, new series of Chicago streets, uh, kind of part vlogging, part photo series. It's very interesting, uh, creative, unique idea. So definitely check that out. And uh, uh, also big thank you uh, to Neil. That was so amazing for him to jump onto uh, our live stream and being a co-host. Definitely check uh, their channel out. It's Halos and Heathens and uh, uh, their podcast as well, Dark Angels and 3D Freaks. Uh, search for that on your favorite podcast. Uh, search engine or app on your phone and uh we're going to be back here tomorrow at uh, usually at 8 p.m eastern tomorrow is our our uh tuesday tech talk oh my god i can't even talk anymore <laughs> tomorrow is our tuesday tech talk uh so if you have any questions about photography videography social graphics or social media and posting just about anything just ask us a question and we'll try to answer and if we don't know the answer somebody in the chat will mm, yeah all the inputs from all of you guys are more than welcome and uh, also this week uh we are gonna have amazing guests uh, as well uh we're gonna have uh, now if i look at my calendar 
We're going to have an amazing guest on Wednesday, a trailer park guy, a little bit different story, a little bit different format, something fun and unique to watch. Um, um, Thursday, we're going to have Geeks Paranormal, two fun girls to watch, um, maybe some spooky stories as well. And on Friday, we're going to have our friends from New Zealand. It's going to be Friday on our time and Saturday at their time, uh, five people uh five amazing new zealanders uh, coming over to our live stream talking about travel and new zealand and on saturday the shambly panel is going to be on so we have calendar full with amazing guests uh so thank you for sticking by tonight and uh, we hope you're coming back tomorrow and if not we're here every day except for sunday at 8 p.m eastern we love you lots. Tomorrow back to our regular schedule. Andrew here, me here. Andrew, me, doodles by Doug. <laughs> Tomorrow. Keep creating. Love you all. Bye.